I am your host, Alex Jones. Thank you so much for joining us. In about 15 minutes, I'm going to go to break. Then we're going to have our next guest on. I'm going to move into the TV studios. And we're going to be there for at least three, four hours covering the debate that is in two hours. And afterwards, our analysis uh, with David Knightley and McAdoo, Darren McBreen, um, Rob Dew. We got Kit Daniels here, Raquel Thalen. So many other great people working on this Sunday night with our smaller crew to bring you this information. We're pretty much commercial free for the evening. We'll have some promos, we'll have some breaks, we'll have some news pieces, but we're pretty much commercial free. I will take time here and there to remind folks that we're listener supported. We're running a special 23% off on our flagship nutraceutical supplement, DNA Force. Find out what it does for your mitochondria, your cells, the ultimate antioxidant combination, 23% off on that product. Uh, we also have our new Biome Defense Probiotic. We have it with 25 billion live and active cultures. That's half the price and 50 billion live and active cultures. Two different um, sizes, but the exact same formulation. And that funds this operation, InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site where you'll find the Bill Clinton rape shirt and where you'll also find the Hillary for Prison shirt that in 29 days, we're going to stop selling it. We may have a few left and then it's discounted, but that's it. But our best-selling T-shirt ever, even more than the Obama Joker shirt we designed that started that whole meme. This is the, our best-selling shirt ever. A lot of them we've sold at cost. That's one reason. Uh, but it does help fund our operation. You know, having a $100,000 contest is not cheap. Uh, the thing that's really expensive is they come after me. Believe me, it's really dangerous to punch a snarling, psychotic, rabies-infested you know, creature like uh, Hillary in the nose. But she's attacking us. She's sending people to Trump rallies to pose as racists and attackers. That's come out in the emails. So uh, turnabout is fair uh, in love and war. We're just doing something much more peaceful, just exposing he has a criminal rape record. I'm glad we launched this a week and a half ago ahead of them claiming, you know, that Trump's this big pervert and rapist and pedophile with no evidence. When Bill Clinton's flying around on Epstein's rape plane. So finishing up with Roger Stone here of the StoneColdTruth.com. We sell both his Bill Clinton's and Hillary Clinton's war on women and the Clinton... Uh, you know, uh, crime history being exposed, as well as the book that accompanies it, the Bush crime family. To have the Bushes endorsing them and to have them calling them family and the Republican rhinos coming out and saying, we're not for Trump now, but ignoring all the crimes of Clinton. It's so transparent. The establishment is against Trump. So let's speak to that. Let's also speak to what you expect to come next. If Trump follows his own gut and other people's advice and not some of the other people's advice that want him to be sweetsy cake, They've got to know he got betrayed. He got set up. We know Hillary threw an intermediaries, promised the daughters and stuff, be nice. We won't go there. She stabbed him in the back. Uh, I mean, I hope to God he gives it to her with both barrels. What would you advise Trump to do? You've got the floor. I'm going to give you 10 minutes right now. Well, I noticed in the New York Times uh, in their uh, story regarding the video that the Trump campaign released in which uh, the candidate sought to put his comments in the now famous Billy Bush tape, which may in fact have been doctored uh, and kind of re-spliced, which I find curious, uh, that at least one of Mr. Trump's advisors, Donald's advisors, told him that he, if he mentioned the Clintons in his statement, it would be, it would not, uh, the statement would be ineffective and it would be a failure. This is about as wrong-headed as I can think. In fact, finally, we got the proper focus on the issue, which, as I've said before, is not infidelity or adultery or uh, girlfriends or mistresses, but something far darker and more sinister, sexual assault and rape. Trump very effectively counterpunched when he essentially said, look, maybe it wasn't a great choice of words, uh, you know, Let's compare my words to their deeds. Let's compare my words to their actions. Uh, now, finally, perhaps, we're going to have this exchange, which I think can have a profound impact among women voters. When I say I'm giving you the floor, brother, that's it. Because if I, if I keep my mic on, I'll, I'll interrupt you constantly. But because you pause, let me play this clip now since you mentioned it. Uh, this is Donald Trump's apology. I think it was spot on. Hey, I've grown a lot. I was behind the scenes 11 years ago. You know, he said, I've never claimed to be perfect. He's never claimed like he was some lily white guy. He's not covered it up. It's why to me, I just don't care. 
I mean, quite frankly, he, he doesn't want America to be sold out. The globalists know it. He's a nationalist. He's got great generals advising him that exposed our government's working with ISIS and Al-Qaeda. I mean, I'm more Donald Trump than ever. The more he gets embattled, the more hyenas turn against him, the more rats turn against him, the more Republican snot noses turn against him, the more I'm for him. That's what Democrats should know. You had it stolen from Bernie Sanders. You, you watched yourselves robbed. Trump's still going to win, maybe not a landslide. They want a perception he lost so they can steal it. They're All they're wanting is plausibility. So let's go to a little two-minute clip of him Friday night responding. Here it is. I've never said I'm a perfect person, nor pretended to be someone that I'm not. I've said and done things I regret, and the words released today on this more than a decade-old video are one of them. Anyone who knows me knows these words don't reflect who I am. I said it, I was wrong, and I apologize. I've traveled the country talking about change for America, but my travels have also changed me. I've spent time with grieving mothers who've lost their children, laid off workers whose jobs have gone to other countries, and people from all walks of life who just want a better future. I have gotten to know the great people of our country, and I've been humbled by the faith they placed in me. I pledge to be a better man tomorrow and will never, ever let you down. Let's be honest. We're living in the real world. This is nothing more than a distraction from the important issues we're facing today. We're losing our jobs. We're less safe than we were eight years ago. And Washington is totally broken. Hillary Clinton and her kind have run our country into the ground. I've said some foolish things, but there's a big difference between the words and actions of other people. Bill Clinton has actually abused women, and Hillary has bullied, attacked, shamed, and intimidated his victims. We will discuss this more in the coming days. See you at the debate on Sunday. Now, what I take from that, this big hoax, oh, resign, oh, 15 neocons say resign, what, what slime? This sounds to me like, get ready, this is going to be epic. I think he's going to tear the living hell out of her. Well, you're exactly right, Alex, about the fact that those Republicans who have headed to the tall grass were never formed to begin with. Uh, and uh, those who uh, bitterly opposed his nomination, the never Trumpers, uh, are helping promulgate this, this myth. Uh, I thought that was uh, very effective, particularly at the end, to try to refocus the campaign on the crimes uh, and the failures of the Clintons. Uh, and if he can continue in that vein tonight with an enormous television audience, this race is still imminently winnable. Uh, the Sunshine Soldiers today who are ready to jump out the windows saying three weeks before an election, this is over, over, nothing's over till we say it is. And I know exactly. Trump. This is total mind control. You have Bill Clinton on the rapist plane 20 something times. You have him flying to the pedophile Sultan's house. You have him settling rape cases. You got Jane Doe made up crap. You've got this stupid thing, and the media is all hoaxing it. Like the media has lost its power, but, but always after the fact, like Obamacare is free or. You know, all these other lies are, we don't want your guns, but we are going to ban them. And now they're saying, it's all over, it's all over, it's over for Trump, it's over. So everybody goes, it's over, it's over, it's over. When Hillary, I almost want him to just steal the election and put Hillary in, because she's falling apart, everybody hates her, and I'm just sick of this crap. Because once she doesn't have Donald Trump to stick her evil demon witch finger at, that damn witch is going to melt like the witch when a big bucket of water got thrown on her. So I guess I can put you down as undecided. I think you just summed it up, Alex. Uh, the, the mainstream media is apoplectic, and they are working hand in glove with the Clinton campaign and the Democrats to create this false narrative. We've yet to see a poll, an authoritative poll, that shows any substantial shift in the electorate after this unprecedented, carefully orchestrated, planted uh, attack on Trump. I don't think you'll have a shift of more than three or four percent of the vote. I was about to say, we even have a Gallup poll where he hadn't even lost half a point in two days by this. And no, I mean, I think pretty much people are decided, and, and I think most people are, are like closeted. I think some of the internal Trump folks are right. There's five, ten points of people that are scared to say they're for Trump. I mean, I think he's going to win a landslide. What about my statement? They're only preparing us for plausibility when Homeland Security steals it. Yeah, this was the most outrageous single claim of the week. The Homeland Security 
uh, uh, cabinet member, secretary, and I believe one of the assistant uh, directors of the anti-terrorism effects come out publicly and say they're concerned that the Russians will hack the election. They're reading the Clinton campaign talking points. They have no evidence. If they have evidence, send it to the Republicans on the Intelligence Committee. They're, they're qualified to see uh, classified information. That's right. I, mean, I forgot. They've now officially come out and said Putin is jacking with the elections with no proof, and they won't release it, and they won't tell Congress. I mean, I mean, this looks like an internal coup already happening 20, 29 days out, Roger. So what do we do? Well, if I were the Republicans in Congress, I would challenge those two officials. No, they're too busy saying Trump should step down because he had locker room talk and said he you know, likes women. Vote the articles of impeachment in the House and convict him in the Senate. The man's lying. There's no evidence the Russians are hacking the, uh, the Jay Johnson's a liar. We've been These hacked so by the New World Order. Order. We're run by foreign banks. Did you see the Secretary of the Army, General Milley, came out on Monday? We played it all week long. And he actually says, you think Russia pulled out? You think the EU is going to fall apart? You think Brexit will happen? We'll hit you harder than you ever been hit. He's saying to the patriots worldwide that want out of the new world order, they're going to hit us. I mean, this is, yeah, oh, and the meanwhile, meanwhile, they had to fire all the generals. Meanwhile, we have a patriot like General Flynn, former head of Army Intelligence and Army Intelligence, period, Defense Intelligence, saying, we've been taken over by multinationals. This is Lexington and Concord. Let's take America back. Meanwhile, this this traitor is up there literally saying, you try to pull out, we'll hit you harder than you ever been hit. Yeah, I mean, it reminded me of it reminded me of the Nuremberg rallies. It had that it had that feeling. The other thing uh, that I think is uh, going very well here is because the mainstream media refuses to cover the rape narrative, our T-shirts are popping up everywhere. Everywhere. I was about to say, Every how day. would you, because it was, it was a Friday and a half ago, it was like a week and a half ago, we had the idea, I had the idea on air, I said they're blocking the rape allegations, they're blocking the rape settlements, I said, that's it, Roger, everybody's going to wear your shirts in public, and to make it fun, get it in public for five seconds on national TV, a thousand, get rape out multiple times on air that you believe is committed crimes, so that's your view, five thousand dollars. I'm down to twenty-five thousand, I'm going to pay out, I'll pay out the hundred thousand, even though it hurts our budget, I'm going to do it, I just sent checks out Friday, and I've got more guests coming up later after you leave us who have actually done this as well, I mean, this could really domino this could really snowball how would you grade the success of this right now just just as an exercise uh, of, of 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 cyber jamming the new world order this is beyond hacking this is live media hacking you know alex i've always had a very high regard for guerrilla warfare and that's exactly what this is if the punks at cnn who by the way edited in a navarro's epic meltdown on tv yeah, we guys finally add a navarro she starts screaming pussy over and over again i forgot to tell you that Anna navarro's in fact describe that yeah uh, she is asked about the uh trump's comments and she flips out and when she's challenged by a trump surrogate to clean up her language she starts screaming at the top of her lungs pussy 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 and they cut to a commercial now when you go to the archive version of the show They've edited that out. CNN, not a news organization, an opinion journal. Oh, they even edit Obama and Hillary's speeches when they make a mistake. They take it out. Yeah, it's it's really extraordinary. And quite clearly now with, as you pointed out, Britt Hume, the former Jack Anderson leg man, reading word for word verbatim talking points from uh, Media Matters for America, the coup d'etat is complete at Fox. They are no longer uh, fair and balanced. They're another cheerleader for the Clinton campaign. Now, there's a few folks there that I still like and I think are patriots, Sean Hannity, uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano, Judge Jeanine Pirro. But the Brett Bears, the, those who were following the general, fair, balanced, objective standard of Fox before the Roger Ailes coup, they're now Quislings for Rupert Murdoch. And exactly. And Nobody's oh. saying Ailes is perfect. The point is, he was taken out for this change. The family then came out and admitted they're for Hillary. And now I watch it when I'm on the treadmill working out in the morning, and I flip back and forth. It's what CNN was five years ago. And, and of course, MSNBC is the most extreme, but CNN's horrible. I mean, they'll have fair and balanced. The, the host is neutral. 
you know, let's say with, uh, you know, Hammer, and then they'll have the Republican lady on going, oh, Hillary just stumbled. She didn't fall. Conspiracy. And the Democrat goes, that's right. Hillary can cr climb Mount Everest. I mean, and then the next show, the next show, it is now tilted towards Hillary, and, and they have the worst polls. In the Fox polls, she's always leading more than anybody. What's interesting, Alex, is they're losing viewers every single day. Where are they going? They're going here to Infowars.com. They're going to Breitbart News. They're Which is why Hillary Breitbart. says she's going to shut us down, the alt-right. Let's say she gets in. They're saying Fairness Doctrine, uh, Federal Election Commission. They've actually announced they're coming after us in mainstream news. I mean, I can't believe the left sits there and goes, no one reads our papers, so let's just shut them down. Don't you idiots get? They'll never go to you. They hate you. And they're boring, and no one believes them anymore. They have shredded their credibility for by being stooges for the new world order. It's over for cable television. Listen, I've it's had people in public walk up to me in Austin and say, I used to like you, but why are you a homophobe or why are you racist? And I go, show me where I was said something bad about somebody who's gay or where I'm you know, hurting black people. It's all made up. They go, actually, I haven't heard that, but I, I just heard you are. And it's like, listen, I'm the real liberal. I'm against nuclear war. I want lower taxes. I want you to be able to live your life. I don't want colleges to say what words to use. We're not a giant brainwashing cult. You people are under the mind control. Wake up. I mean, you're for marijuana legalization. You're a libertarian. You're involved in all this stuff. You've been against the Bushes for over a decade. It's not like we're sitting here. The Democrats have turned into like a cult of loons. Well, name calling is, is a staple of the left's bag of tricks. When they can't refute your arguments, they they start to name call you. Max Boot, this punk, kept calling me a conspiracy theorist for the next breath. He would say, Donald Trump's running down America. Everything in this country is great. Things are going terrifically. What planet does this guy live on? And he's salivating for war. They can't wait to have war. Uh, praising the Bushes. Look, look, they're, they're demon-possessed. They're demon-possessed. I mean, I mean, something is wrong with these people. I mean, I, I mentioned this earlier. I got plenty of news to get to, but I'm going to go back to this. I'm watching congressional hearings where Republicans and Democrats are saying, we want to no fly zone. And they go, Russia was invited in. We had a deal with them. We've broken the ceasefire, but if we attack Russia, they'll attack back. And they go, but, but we have drones. And they go, but they'll attack where the drones are launched from. They'll attack. And they just go, attack. And they go, okay, give us a declaration of war. I mean, the generals are the ones restrained now from the loons that keep thinking we attack Russia. They're like Iraq or something. I mean, don't they get we're not cruise missileing Sudan here? The, the other thing I noticed today among the, the political establishment is that Governor Bill Weld, who was running for vice president on the libertarian ticket, has essentially announced that he's no longer supporting his running mate, Gary Johnson, who selected him. He's betrayed the delegates who selected him at the National Convention of the Libertarian Party. He's endorsed Hillary, and he's now out campaigning against And Donald that was Trump. the plan all along. And no question. Ambassador Well, oh, pardon me. Ambassador Well, what deal did he make? You know, you know Johnson well. You you ran with presidential campaigns. I liked him before when he was. I mean, I know him. I probably interviewed him ten times in person. The last time he was here, he was like a different person. Like, I mean, I said he acted mentally ill or crazy. Has he had a stroke or what's going on with his tongue sticking out and not knowing any world leader and not knowing? I mean, what's going on? I don't think the campaign has any guidance. More importantly, I can't understand how his campaign has raised. I think in the next report, it will be about ten million. Have you seen a lot of his TV commercials there in Texas, uh, Alex? No. no. His radio commercials? Where's this money going? His filings with the FEC are opaque. And by the way, he announced last week, he said, I'm going to dedicate my time to bringing on Trump now. So they're showing they're desperate. The Libertarian Party's been taken over as a kamikaze zero going into the Trump Lexington, and I'm not going to put up with it. It's very, very sad because I think Gary Johnson's a good man. He's been betrayed by his... Quizzling, Harvard-educated establishment running mate. Now, I like Bill Weld on a personal level. He's a highly intelligent, engaging guy, and he was a great governor of Massachusetts. He governed as a real libertarian, low taxes, low spending, support for the Second Amendment. That's not the Bill Weld who's running in this campaign for vice president. He's just made his deal in a, in a complete example of treachery with Bill and Hillary Clinton. Unbelievable. Well, Roger... I know you're a busy man. I know you're a busy man. I want you to take two minutes up to finish up any other points, and then I want to invite you back.
after the debate is over for like 10 minutes to give your analysis of what happened. The debate is coming up in an hour and 40 minutes exactly after 90 minutes after that. I know you got a lot of interviews coming up. Uh, can you, uh, when I put you on hold in a moment, tell the crew sometime uh, after, um, I guess that'd be 1030 Eastern, 930 Central that you can pop in. Is that possible? Uh, well, let's try to work it out. But let me say and if you can't now. do it, then tomorrow, because obviously we got the daytime show. Go ahead. This is very important. Again, tonight, only uh, minutes from now, Hillary Clinton will begin the debate by refusing to shake Trump's hand. And then by prearrangement, Anderson Cooper will ask her why, setting her up for a blistering attack on Trump. Now, Donald Trump is warned. His campaign is warned. The media has now been tipped off. Let's see what Hillary does. You know, Thanks we discuss we discuss whether you'd come on 10 minutes before the debate and do this and not tell them and then see if they went ahead with it and not give them a chance to pull back. If we wanted personal mojo, we would just do that to say, see, we were right, she did it. But but we're a shot across the bow. Uh, you know, I mean, you were on 45 minutes ago, so two hours plus before the debate. We're now an hour and 38 minutes out. Uh, we have given them fair warning. Do you think it's time to percolate up uh, to their campaign? Well, look, we're like Paul Revere. This is an early warning, and therefore it needs to be all over Twitter and Facebook. We have uncovered the the plot. Anderson Cooper's in it with the Clinton campaign. Clinton, uh, pardon me, CNN stands for Clinton News Network. So th this debate is a fraud. Right, so give me the tweet, because I'm going to go to break. I'm going to tweet. Roger, I mean, do I just say Clinton and Cooper... Uh, to launch uh, you, you know, uh, attack on Trump out of Gates, or what do we say? Or, or Clinton? What I would say is Hillary Clinton will refuse to shake Donald Trump's hand, and Anderson Cooper will ask her why in a setup to take down Donald sure, Trump. Sure, too long for Twitter. So, so we just say well, Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, insider. Hillary will not shake Trump's hand in, in Cooper's setup. Works for me. Let's tweet that right now, guys, or I'll come out there during the break. Uh, again, Roger, um, when the debate's over, you already got shows lined up, or you pop back in with us? No, I think we can work that out. I'm just, uh, as you can imagine, it's a hectic day because I have concerned Trump supporters from all over the country calling me saying, please tell Mr. Trump not to drop out. Yeah, oh, a thousand plus people, a thousand plus people, let's talk about this, spontaneously showed up at Trump headquarters begging him not to quit. He came out and told him he wasn't today. Uh, we have that clip as well up on Infowars.com. Again, they said over and over again a month ago he was going to drop out and it was all over. They keep running these hoaxes. The, the same media said Obamacare was free. The same media said Iraq had nuclear weapons. The same media said that Trump was for the Iraq war when we have six clips saying he wasn't before the damn thing. They are liars. We have Gruber saying, I met with Obama on how to deceive the public to triple their prices. I mean, hasn't the public gotten it? They have to stop believing these frickin' people. I think the public has gotten it, but if you are a Trump supporter, you can see how you might be down Stampeded, stampeded like lemmings. Because you read constantly that Trump is considering dropping out. Alex, let me say this to be absolutely clear. He never even thought about dropping out. He's a fighter. He's a brawler. Anybody who writes him He intends now, to fight if they try to steal it. He's already he's already signaled that. We will so. never stop. We will never go go away. We will never give in. We will go on no matter what it takes. We will defend this republic. Amen. I'm paraphrasing Winston Churchill. All right, uh, stonecoldtruth.com. Get the Clinton rape shirt at infowars.com. Uh, we are the exclusive group outside of Stone. He's the only other person selling it. I don't care where you get it. Just get out in public, wear it, get in these people's faces, break their conditioning, and point out that it is, it is Clinton flying around with Epstein, the convicted pedophile, not Donald Trump. This is made up with John Doe filings, completely fake. Uh, too close to the election to ever prove it one way or the other. This is incredible. Infowarsstore.com, the Bill Clinton rape shirt, limited edition. We also have the Hillary for Prison shirt. Wear it. Do your own YouTubes with it. I don't care what you do. Just get, even if you're not going to do it on national TV for the prize, just just get the word out. It's, in fact, I think it's going to cascade this week. I think it's going to get even bigger this week. What do you think, Roger? Well, I, I agree with you. And now that I have read that Bill Clinton is going to undertake a bus tour on behalf of his wife, it's time to introduce the official Bill Clinton rape whistle, because everywhere he goes, our people need to whistle in huge numbers. Do you imagine five or six politics. women in one group whistling? They, it'll take them an hour to get them all out. Rape, rape, whistle, whistle.
Exactly. So uh, this. So uh, stay tuned. Very shortly, you'll be able to go online and get your official Bill Clinton rape whistle. Are you going to let us be uh, distributors as well? We've already made a deal with your people. Good. Well, I know you're just great with Weldon. Great. Let me just say this final thing, Mr. Revere, Mr. Mr. Roger Stone. Do you think she's disappearing in an announcement for another 20 days and is only saying she's going to do this event and now her surrogates, Kane and Bill, are out there stumbling around, I mean, confronted by people saying that, you know, obviously they're involved in stuff. Do you think that's because she is so sick or is it because they don't want her confronted with Bill Clinton rape? I think it's, I don't think she has the stamina for a campaign. Look, of course she was jacked up on something. I, I assume kind of some kind of methamphetamine to, uh, as John Kennedy was, by the way, in her, his being first injected. Day. He was being injected with it. Yes, by, by Dr. Max Jacobson. So uh, they managed to prop her up for one debate. She can't even keep a full schedule because her, her, uh, her health is so bad. Now, for those who say, ah, that's a conspiracy theory, why do we have email in which she's asking Parkinson's. for Parkinson's medicine? We have her. Why? Finally, another question, and then I'm going to this tape, and I'm going to go to the other studio, do 30 minutes, have another guest on, and then hand the baton for an hour to the other crew, and I'm going to come in and cover the debate live, and then they will take over uh, in the aftermath. I'll do 30 minutes with you, but they'll do an hour and a half uh, after that, and, and, and take phone calls as well here on the Sunday night, Then I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m., 3 p.m. Roger, WikiLeaks, uh, I, I confirm with my sources, I talked to you, so that's incredible, you have the same sources, uh, well, well, similar information, that a New York lawyer threatened him, he admitted he'd been threatened, he, he canceled the Wednesday event, then did Skype, then backed off said well, we'll release it in two days they did release it friday milk toast compared to what he said he would he said it would you know it would get her indicted it's just more corporate stuff more globalism more world government no no borders we already knew that so we have her doing that it looks to me like at least so far wikileaks has chickened out i'm not prepared to make that judgment yet uh he did promise revelations for 10 weeks at the beginning of each week let's see what happens uh on monday uh, the release of her bank speech is not insignificant because what it shows the American people is she says one thing in public, then she says something entirely different to her well-heeled patrons who are financing her aspirations for Sure, power. she badmouths her constituents. Proving once again that she's a pathological liar. All right, Roger Stone, thank you so much. We'll talk to you again this evening and tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. sometime. Thank you. Great to be here, Alex. Many thanks. Thank you. I'm going to go to this piece I shot yesterday, basically promoing tonight. And I did it from the edge of a cliff for a reason. Then in seven minutes when it's over, I'm going to be in the other studio. And I've got some clips I want to play uh, dealing with the Clintons uh, and dealing with uh, the whole TPP and her wanting to raise taxes in the middle class. And how it ties into Tim Kaine wanting to admit her emails have been hacked, even though they're admitted to be real. Uh, and we've got a lot more. So there's a lot of other news, obviously, breaking up at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We're an hour and 32 minutes out from the debate. And it's important that your neighbors, your friends, your families, you know, on your smart TV or whatever, you can put it on your big screen TV, have the neighbors over. Or you can you know, send your neighbor InfoWars.com forward slash app, say, hey, download it on your Droid or iPhone. That's how we get more people tuning in. Let me tell you, we're up to like 3 million people tuning into some of these now. Or we can look, verify, 3 million tune in. You know, a couple of... You know, like a million and a half live, the next day a million, two million more. That's not just counting millions on AM and FM and TV. That's exciting. That's bigger than most networks have carrying this. And it's because you're spreading the word. You're the real power. You're the oxygen in the room for this whole thing. So Infowars.com forward slash show uh, or simply uh, Infowars.com forward slash app. Uh, you can download the free podcast link to that. Uh, there's a free video feed. Uh, and so much more. Live Trump versus the globalist world debate. Share this link at Volwars.com forward slash show. Great job of the crew. I'm going to take a little seven minute break to uh, get my articles together, walk across into the TV studio, and we're going to get ready to kick off our official, let me see, one and a half hours, another half, three hours for us, but another five hours or so of live coverage from the InfoWars News Center in Austin, Texas. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us and spread the word. We're now only 30 days out from the November 8, 2016 election. I'm Alex Jones for InfoWars.com, and I've got a message for Donald Trump. Attack Hillary or drop out. We're coming to you this Saturday evening from right outside Austin, Texas, on the edge of a literal 400-foot-plus cliff. And at the end of this incredibly important emergency alert, I'm going to break down why I chose this location 
to cover this information. If Donald Trump doesn't double down out of the gates tomorrow night during the debate against Hillary on Sunday that we'll be covering live and just viciously go into the fact that how dare your surrogate media dredge up edited 11 year tapes of locker room, you know, guy talk while you have protected Bill and gone after the women with your female cover over and over again while Bill settled sexual assault and rape cases. How dare you sit there and bring up that I made some comments about you know, some Miss Universe eating too much uh, and so I hate women, but then meanwhile, you are openly funding the jihadists in the Middle East, the Wahhabists, the ISIS people. That's, that's the proxy armies that, that, that Hillary and Obama have been literally running to go in and then butcher Christians in mass and enslave women and sell children into sex slavery. I mean, understand, Hillary is literally quarterbacking all this. So is John McCain. It's bipartisan treason, and we've been exposing it. This is the type of hypocrisy that you've got to come out of the gates and attack, not sit there and defend yourself. But for the sake of rational thought, let's take Donald Trump out of the equation, and let's look at who Hillary Clinton is and how she's protected her husband. She went after the women viciously that would expose his rapes, his sexual abuse. He settled some of these cases. This is well known. And so how could the mainstream media ignore all of that and have a major embargo against that information being brought up? I mean, you get banned off CNN, Fox, you name it if you bring it up, and then sit around and take Donald Trump 11 years ago in some edited locker room tape and turn this into the biggest issue in the world and how he hates women. This is such a ploy. And that's the reason I'm on a cliff here today, because there are many species that can be stampeded through hype, through fear, off the edge of a cliff. And to lemmings going over the edge of a cliff, they feel like they're doing the right thing because everybody else is going in that direction. And that's what these big globalist hype machines do, like Obamacare, that promise to give you free health care or keep your doctor. And then you have Gruber, the guy that orchestrated it, admitting that Obama hired him to help lie to the public. And thank God the public doesn't pay attention and doesn't have attention spans. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. That's what all of this is about. The establishment that's been screwing you over forever wants you to be mad at Donald Trump about some racy comments 11 years ago, but then completely ignore Hillary in Benghazi and four Americans dying, ordering the stand down, being caught lying about it, and then saying, what difference does it make? The fact is, we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? Our society, our culture, militarily, uh, spiritually, economically, is all being basically demolished right now. Open corporate world government via the TPP and other systems is being established. And in the UK, they have begun to pull out of this with the Brexit and Nigel Farage. Here in the US, we're beginning through populism to pull out, and Donald Trump's just one manifestation of that. Russia is doing the same thing as well, pulling out of this corporate world government. And the controlled media and the basic domesticated masses have been programmed that all of this is a foregone conclusion and that we have to go along with this system. But we don't have to be herded like lemmings over the edge of a cliff. We don't have to be mindless animals that are just easily programmed. If people claim they want change and they're sick of the establishment, and then you sit back and you see the entire corporate media combine doing everything they can to stop Donald Trump and the populist movement, what does that tell you? That you really don't want change. That you really do want the crumbs off the table from the establishment. You really do like NAFTA and GATT and the TPP. You really do like associating yourself with the mainstream media, which admittedly is collapsing. It's time to stop being followers. It's time to start being leaders. And of course, you can also look at what's happened with past Democrat and Republican presidents. I mean, did anybody go after JFK? It was probably 10 times the womanizer uh, of Trump. No. Does people go after Clinton for all his womanizing and rape? No, that's what I'm saying is this is just all a bunch of hype where everyone decides to get offended and now we're not going to support him show that when he still has his landslide victory, they come in with electronic voting machines, steal it, but there's the perception that he's discredited and lost and was a loser. The attempt to take down Trump is as big a fraud as Obamacare. If you'll just read the fine print and actually look at the legislation, you would have known it was a scam written by insurance companies to rip you off. And it's the same thing here. The facts are there. The globalists that are our enemies that have taken this country over are absolutely opposed to Donald Trump for a good reason. He's a nationalist. 
He will put America first. And that's why the political system is panicking. And they want a nation of total followers. Before I conclude, I also want to relay to the viewers and listeners of this broadcast that we have been given an exclusive dossier from moles inside the Democratic Party of the future attack plan on Donald J. Trump that will be launched on Monday and Tuesday. This exclusive information in detail will be relayed tomorrow. But to give you a hint of one of their new major attacks, remember eight months ago the dismissed fake 14-year-old rape victim in Houston? Fake name, you name it. And then others were filed in New York? That was done so news reports could be compiled for later off of those frivolous reports. And so if you think the setup of Donald Trump is bad now, get ready. That's why they're laying the groundwork with this audio of him talking about how much he likes women before they release the next fake salvo. Join myself, Alex Jones, and the InfoWars crew. Sunday night, in less than 24 hours, we will cover the second historic debate. Trump must go on the attack and blast through the disinformation and lies. All of you need to understand this is an info war, and it's critical for you to get your friends, your family, your neighbors, and others to tune in tomorrow night to the free streams at infowars.com forward slash show or via the free app that has audio and video feeds as well as news, infowars.com forward slash app on Droid and Apples, and it's absolutely free. Alex Jones Show, because there is a war on for your mind. The right-wing smear machine has gotten Alex Jonesified this election cycle. It's a guy named Alex Jones. Alex Jones. From InfoWars. From InfoWars. Yeah. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. One of those guys who believes that Bigfoot was responsible for 9-11. I heard that on Alex Jones, so it's true. Claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. The conspiracy du jour, Hillary Clinton is harboring a secret medical condition. You just had to keep digging, didn't you, Alex? I heard it on Alex Jones, so I Google is being accused of hiding negative stories about Hillary and her campaign by changing its algorithm to vary stories like the Clinton body count story. That's according to website InfoWars. And this really just is so disgusting. The juice of these pickles is on you, Alex Jones. It goes right from Alex Jones, and it shows up in Donald Trump's mouth. Hillary Clinton created ISIS with Obama. The very fringe of the conspiracy movement, like Alex Jones, are being kind of incorporated uh, into the campaign. If Trump gets elected, he's going to be Secretary of Defense. I think that Alex Jones is a lunatic. Boo, bitch! Get, get out, out the way! Bill Clinton is a rapist at InfoWars.com. Bill Clinton is a rapist! <laughs> Bill Clinton is a rapist. Infowars.com. Infowars.com. Bill Clinton's a rapist. The New World Order sends its regards. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. It's Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see live coverage. I'm going to try not to interrupt too much, but we're going to have live coverage and analysis of the 2016 second historic debate. I think bigger than the last one. Because of how staged the last one was, Donald Trump has got to come out with guns blazing and just point out the hypocrisy. Some locker room talk from 11 years ago that's clearly edited, being tele edited. And they're making this like the biggest thing in the world. The Clintons start all these wars and settle rape cases, and Hillary covers it up. Now, I knew about this a week ago. We're working on getting her in studio this week. I knew about this a week ago. I didn't go with it because it wasn't supposed to break until tonight. But it's all over Twitter. I had crew running up to me about it who's not involved in producing. And they said, Kathy Shelton, the 12-year-old girl that got raped, was in a coma. Hillary was the defense lawyer for this establishment guy, knew he was guilty. We have played the tapes of her bragging, oh, man, I knew he was guilty. But I, you know, accused a little girl of wanting it, you know, wanting to have bones broken. And I, you know, he, he took a lie detector. I knew he was, he passed it. I couldn't believe it. I never believed in lie detectors again because I knew he was guilty. They've, they've opened fire with her new Twitter account. She just started. They've opened it up. I guess they think it's too late an hour before, an hour and 20 minutes before. But she's going to be in the front row when Hillary comes out and goes, how dare you talk about grabbing a woman's, you know, wee-wee or whatever. I mean, boom, they're going to hit her with that. Oh, like Kathy Shelton you represented with a convicted pedophile that you knew was innocent like that? 
So that's some of the surprises coming up tonight. Now, these things can change as they go. But guess what? Guess what? Kit Daniels is writing an article about. I told crew members on Friday that we were going to get a dossier on Saturday, and I said they were going to file, well, they were going to come out in court and accept the case of three Jane Doe's, the victim, the madam, and some person that just heard about it later, that Donald Trump with Jerry Epstein, who's the Clinton Foundation founder and best buddies, whether they fly around the world to known pedophile sultans' houses, you name it, I covered it earlier, that because they knew that Trump had that as his doomsday device, why not just file these lawsuits with no names on it, have a book that was started to be written a year ago that is going to be published tomorrow, out of the blue, and get all, and get all this attention that it, was, it wasn't Epstein, it was, it was Trump. That's right, Trump and Epstein double-teaming little girls. 22 years ago. So Kit Daniels says, hey, Alex, did you notice? Here's a line independent. Judge sets date for hearing of lawsuit accusing Donald Trump of underage rape. This just came out today. See, I sent out a video yesterday saying they're going to accuse him of underage rape. I told you. Hell, we had stunned on a year ago naming it all. He already knew. He'd been advising Trump to attack first. Trump didn't do it. Because... His daughters were talking to Chelsea, and Chelsea was saying, Mommy's going to be nice at the first debate. Just be nice. Call her secretary, and that means that you're going to be nice, and we're going to be nice. And Hillary gives him the fake, like, oh, you're going to be nice. And then at the end, she attacks him. And he goes, you know, I was going to be nice and not bring up some bad things, and I'm still not going to. No, 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 no. You will attack. Or I would say that... Uh, they're going to definitely steal the election. Look, there's 10% or more that aren't telling people they're for Trump. That's known in the polling. He's way ahead in battleground states. He's going to have a landslide at this point. Even Gallup came out. We have a story on Infowars.com. He lost half a point with the Pussygate thing. And I mean, that's not a cuss word, so I can use it. And so all that's going on. And this is the prime, the pump for pedophile gate. They're about to launch to cover up their entire operation. So this is a big, big deal. And then Kit goes, Alex, I uh, went and Googled that judge's name. And guess what we found? We're going to put an article out on Infowars.com the next hour. Surprise, 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 Sergeant. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Kit Daniels found out something about the judge that set the date with three unnamed witnesses from 22 years ago that saw Donald Trump raping Jack Frost. Kit Daniels from InfoWars.com. Tell folks what you've discovered. People can check it out for themselves. You're getting an article going up very, very soon. Kit Daniels. Yeah, Alex, I thought it was a little weird that only hours after you put out that viral video on how the Democrats, particularly the Hillary campaign, was about to launch this rape allegations against Trump, we have this federal judge that unusual, unusually, she signs off on this lawsuit during the weekend. So I looked her up, and it said that Abrams, the judge, uh, Ronnie Abrams, she was appointed by President Barack Obama, uh, formally nominated and appointed for the Southern District of New York in 2011, after she was recommended for the position by the Democratic senator from, from New York. Which is Hillary Clinton. Well, yeah, well, actually, it was the new one, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. But Kirsten Gillibrand actually took over the vacancy left by Hillary Clinton. That's what I mean, yeah. That's, that's yeah. still her spot, yeah. Yeah. So it's just this whole, and I looked at the lawsuit myself, and... I just I've I've done like four or five different articles over the past three years on various lawsuits, so I'm used to reading lawsuits. No, that's why when Trump comes yeah. out and says this guy's a La Reconquista, he was heading up the La Reconquista Hispanic Ku Klux Klan organization. Mm -hmm. But Trump wasn't I don't want to say eloquent enough, but just threw it out there. Yeah, he's a Mexican. He wants and and, and Trump says no, there are Mexicans that are American. This guy's from Mexico because the guy is. But see, he he doesn't put it out where it's all calculated, and that's why they cut him to pieces. Yeah, you got to look past the smoke screen and realize that there's political motivations against the, about the people that are attacking Trump. Absolutely. Well, listen, bring me that uh, Wikipedia, and I want to show this to folks. I've got a new article coming out on this. Let's get it out as soon as possible. Anything else, Kit? That's it, Alex. Thank you. Bring it on in, my friend. He's in there in the control room with the evil racist towards Washington behind him. So all of this is unfolding. You can see it in real time. A judge appointed by Obama. Recommended in the former district controlled by the Clintons. Yeah, just bring the paper on in. It's fine, Kit. You can walk it on there. It's fine. Bring it on in to me. 
You've got all this unfolding, all this un you know happening, and it's just you can see how it's all staged. And then tomorrow, notice you've heard nothing about it. I told you yesterday, watch. Tomorrow, they're going to announce a book out of the blue that's interviewed the Jane Doe's about Trump raping the little girl. Just like it was the daughter of the ambassador. They didn't tell you that on C-SPAN, that they saw Saddam take the babies out of the incubators and stomp their brains out. None of it was true. Saddam, a great guy, no, but he was installed by the CIA. Much better than, you know, the, uh, the, the people that came after it. And it just makes your head spin to see this magnitude of garbage unfolding. And this is the hour of hoaxes. This is the hour of disinformation. You've got him on the plane 20-something times with Jerry Epstein. You've got him going to the pedophile island, Bill Clinton. You've got Hillary representing pedophiles. You've got Bill Clinton settling rape cases. None of that matters. Jane Doe, two minutes to midnight, 29 days. It'll be 28 tomorrow. The book will suddenly be everywhere. Imaginary people say green men from Mars were raping children with Donald Trump. Now, Jeremy Spangle of Twitter.com forward slash Spangle Vision has been doing the analysis that's later been confirmed of not one, not two. We've been going in and scanning as well. Others with the hum, human element, the human intelligence are scanning this fake town hall she had a few weeks ago that they aired like it was real with a bunch of extras, a bunch of actors, a bunch of Democratic Party operatives in a staged event. That way, if she has a convulsion, they can cover it up. And they've even got a famous Hollywood actress running the whole thing. So you talk about the running man of your radio listener. We've obviously covered this in detail. Just Google Hillary caught using child actors. And this gets creepy. She's in anti-gun videos, too, about how cool and Bill Clinton is and how much she likes him. So you, And then she was in a movie about kidnapped children, kidnapped little girls, kidnapped by a man. So there's definitely just a lot of weirdness going on here. And uh, Jeremy Spangle who I've said I want to be an auxiliary reporter for his bare minimum, does a great analysis of this at twitter.com forward slash Spanglevision. I know his last name was Spangle. I figured it was some play of words of like the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, but it's definitely great to have him with us uh, and to uh, be joining us. You can follow him again at Spanglevision, S-P-A-N-G-L-E-V-I-S-O-N. And we'll also tweet that out at Infowars.com. We need to tweet, though. Did we tweet? Well, I said, just to make sure we're so busy, that... Uh, Insider, Hillary Clinton, you heard it here first, will refuse to shake Trump's hand tonight during the debate. Do we have that out there? Good, good, good. I want to put it on screen. And I also just want to point out that we have more protesters we haven't shown taunting Hillary about rape, you know, outside the event. They are besieged. They are under siege. So you want to have the media have a blackout and fire anybody or blackball anybody? That's been admitted. Uh, who talks about Bill Clinton rape, and you want to make up stuff about Trump? Notice they didn't go and have somebody else separate from Epstein claim it was really Trump, not Clinton. They knew Trump was planning this. And so they went and cooked it up on him. Whoa! I mean, this is amazing. With a judge appointed by Obama in Hillary's district in New York, Right before the election, I'm, and the media will not tell their viewers a thing, but their viewers will find out about it. Or they'll find out about one of the other big lies. You know what? Trump's mic was turned off the crowd and was being faded up and down. Debate commission admits it. They are rigging the polls. They are rigging Google. They are rigging to their own detriment because even if they defeat Trump, it's almost even better because we fight, we fight, we fight. They cheat, they steal it, and they're all discredited even more. They have a pyrrhic victory, which means a victory you lose the battle. You're the patriot, but the enemy that wins it ends up collapsing because of it. They win the battle, but they lose the war. A Pyrrhic victory. Resistance is victory. We have the right on our side. So Jeremy Spangle joining us till the end of the hour and a little bit into the next because we're commercial free now. We're, a lot of stations are carrying us. They can go to break whenever they feel like it. But this is commercial free right now. Infowars.com forward slash show. Listeners, spread that link everywhere. Wow. Uh, do you want to com commentate on what you just heard us talk about or or, or this latest little girl that comes out that's an actress uh, in other Democratic Party ads. Uh, I mean, where should we begin here? I mean, you talk about a facade. Imagine if Donald Trump got caught with fake town halls with fake actresses. Uh, what do you think is going on here, uh, Jeremy? Yeah, we wouldn't hear the end of it. It would be a constant 
constant uh, news coverage of that. But um, I, I, don't, I don't know uh, what to think of it. I just want to say um, I was listening to you uh, about a month ago, and you, you kind of made a call to arms to uh, get all those info warriors out there um, doing what they can. And, uh, and I, I, let's say on uh, Tuesday, I saw Hillary's camp tweeted that they had a live town hall on Facebook. So I started watching it. And as soon as uh, that first questioner got on the air and asked her question, um, it, it just didn't sit well with me. I knew something was up. And again, you were proven right. That's the subconscious that's hundreds of times more powerful, admittedly, some say thousands, depending on the person, than the conscious brain. It looks fake. It looks staged. There's an actress. It looks weird. I mean, you can tell when a movie's a movie. I mean, you know The Godfather's not real because it looks so slick and so real. You know when something's a really a home movie because it's a home movie. And, you know, you can see they even shot it so slick it was meant to look real, but it wasn't. And, and yeah. the audio and the scripting and the little girl in the red bow. It's like the fake preachers that, you know, have the, 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 you know, the radios saying she's got bad teeth in the front and arthritis because they fell out of form. I mean, this was beyond that truly exploitive. And so you start digging. Tell us what you found. So I'll just walk you through the process. You know, um, I, I, I didn't know the girl's last name. Uh, I, she introduced herself as Brennan. So, I mean, it was just simple on the surface Google searching. And uh, Brennan, just did a search for Brennan and, and Hillary Town Hall. And um, to my surprise, the mainstream media was, they were reporting on it. You know, for them, it was, a, it was an anti-Trump story. So th that's all they were talking about. And how this 15-year-old girl just uh, trounced Trump. And um, but it, was th it was those articles that disclosed her, her last name. And from there, it just, I just, I found an IMDB page and the light bulb went off in my head that this girl is an actress. I mean, yeah, in a pretty big film, in commercials, um, the child kidnapping genre. It, it's insane. And uh, yeah, I found that I found the, the then movie. Then we found out IMDb Daddy was somebody, didn't we? We did. I didn't find that out. Uh, there's some Redditors. That well, sure, but another human. You hit the first domino, then more people on Reddit on the Donald found more, then other people found more actors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and by the way, anything you look at, you're going to find crime and deception with these people because they're so dirty. It, it, it's the nature of psychopaths. I'm not saying she is, but the, 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 the handlers, to always create something fake because they don't have a real personality. So they don't know what to do. They've got to construct something. That's why they're obsessed with thespian. Glenn Beck is obsessed. Everything's an act because there's no one there. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe uh, how, just scratching on the surface, I, I was able to uncover this. And I, I, had, I had somebody comment on the video about how this just shows how much the mainstream media is in bed with Hillary. I mean, if they were doing their jobs, it wouldn't have taken it wouldn't have taken them 30 minutes. To I've find been told out by media I, folks that since we have the secret, they go, of course we know she's having convulsions all the time, but she's better than Trump. They know she's having these. The Secret Service just said, start following her around. It happens all the time. And then it happened. Yeah. And it goes to show you how important the everyday person is in this fight because it was it wasn't the media that recorded her on that curb it, it was it was and again uh, that's why you're here you are the future you are the resistance we're not just as good as the mainstream we're willing to tell the truth and just show what happened chips fall where they may if i had video of her jumping rope i'd say hey she looks great but we yeah. tell it like it is and the thing is well, no matter what happens to me or you as more people get involved no matter what happens with this election we are their downfall it's our responsibility because nobody else is going to do it. If we don't do it, uh, Hillary's in, you know. It's, well, listen, you're a polite guy. I want to give you like 10 minutes to yourself. You've got the floor. Talk about what you think <laughs> in the world. Why? I didn't know you were spurred by us. It's, it's very humbling that nine times out of 10, literally, folks are spurred by this show. Because despite all my faults, I'm excited. I'm awake. I tend to have that wavelength of getting people out of a trance. You weren't in a trance, but it spurred you to action. Let's have you spur others to action. Just take over. What do we do to fight this tyranny? Just, just be vigilant. Yeah, keep your ears and eyes open, and if you see anything, uh, start digging. It's, it's not, it's not hard. 
a 10 minutes, that's a, that's a tall, tall order. I don't know that I can run the, run the uh, floor for 10 minutes, but um, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And keep your eyes and ears open for sure. Well, we've had the mantra that uh, Hillary for president has been the mantra they admit of the campaign for the last six months. Now, the mantra is new mantra in presidential contest, rape, World Net Daily. What do you make of that? I mean, they want to send people to rallies to claim he's racist with no evidence, or and now they want to say he rapes little girls with, with, with Jane Doe saying it. Well, Bill Clinton settled rape cases. We're going to say it then. Yeah, well, it just goes to show you that, that they, they don't have, there's no boundaries. The gloves are off. And it's time for Trump to fight back it, it, just as hard. You know, it seems like in that first debate, you know, he wanted to appear presidential and he, he refrained. Um, well, I, I found out Hillary reached out to the daughters and BS him. He got set up. I can't believe he did it. But go ahead. Well, you know, tonight's his, his, his redemption. He's, he's uh, the future of our country is on the line. And, you know, when I see Hillary uh, staging town halls, it, you know, it it infuriates me it upsets me because this is my country it's like the running man i mean in the running man when they find out it's fake the dictatorship is overthrown it's 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 crazy you can't make this stuff up it's crazier than science fiction and it's it's happening right now so and you know what that tells me uh, mr spangle they're going for broke we've got to expose them we've got to fight them we have to our country's on the line so well, you're making some great points, and I really want to get some auxiliary reporters that are paid positions where our budget isn't huge, but we've got the budget for three or four full-time, five or six other part-time. But I'd love to, if you can find like a camera crew we pay and some folks or have you do analysis or points, we'd love to have you you know, develop in that and be able to move forward, maybe get you here full-time. That's all up to listeners supporting us and spreading the word. Uh, but we have a great responsibility to have great analysts like you out there taking action. So it's very, very exciting to see you doing this, my friend. Uh, what are your predictions, your gut-level feelings? I mean, if they turned his mic off to the crowd, faded it down to, to TV viewers, if they asked, interrupted him 40-plus times, her six times, uh, you know, uh, Pence 60-something times, uh, the other guy four times, Kane. I mean, my God, this is going to be a double team where there's two reporters attacking him, one CIA, the other rat lady, and then you're going to have Hillary. That's three to one. I mean, I hope Trump calls this out. He has to. It's not going to be any different. I mean, it's it's hosted by Anderson Cooper. I, you couldn't get a more pro Hillary moderator. So he's going to have to. He's just going to have to take the bull by the horns and and um, you know, do what he does best. What got him to to, to the Republican uh, uh, nomination. So he's he's capable. I, I'm I'm optimistic and confident that. Uh, he's going to shine tonight. You know, the first that first uh, debate was was him just testing the water. So uh, I, I'm optimistic that it's going to be a good night for him. Damn the maneuvers and go straight at him. I think that's which British Lord was that? I think that wasn't uh, Lord Acton. That was power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. It was Lord Nelson, I believe. Damn the maneuvers. Just go straight at him. Uh, thank, listen, I really appreciate where he lost. He died in that battle, but won that won that war, won that naval engagement in that war. Uh, but it was the Battle of the Nile. But listen, you're doing a great job. I cannot tell you what a rock star you are to us. Everybody that takes thank action, you. these folks that go and scream Hillary's a rapist or whatever with all these enemies around them. This is the future, and it's very, very exciting. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Alex. All right, we will talk to more folks in the future, but that was Jeremy hey, Spangle. Alex, I want to break in real quick. It looks like Trump is right now having a press conference with uh, all these rape victims of Bill Clinton. It's on the top left of Drudge. It's a red link. Uh, let's Facebook show it. Let's go to DrudgeReport.com. Let's uh, put some of that up uh, with, uh, with him right now. Absolutely a devastating. I knew he had to launch first. This shows he is going to turbo her. He is going to go straight for the jugular. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. See you. See you. So I don't know if it started yet, but no, it just started. Let's uh, let, uh, let's get this press conference, right, and then we're going to get our next guest lined up while this happens. Who got up there and yelled, "Bill Clinton's a rapist!" Uh, in Nevada, it was it was Nevada, uh, and to, really took over the strongest of anybody. Um, so uh, he's done a sneak attack press conference with the ladies. Uh, the the, four, the twelve year old that got raped, she's going to be there tonight uh, in the front row, and Hillary accuses him of saying, you know, joking about grabbing a lady. So, uh, oh, he, said, he didn't say I grab a lady by the you know what. Oh, so that lady's sitting right next to Trump. Yeah, there she is. She's sitting right next to Trump. These four very courageous women. Have Kathy Shelton. Here's Donald Trump. 
be here, and it was our honor to help them. And I think they're each going to make just an individual short statement, and then we will have a little meeting, and uh, we'll see you at the debate. Okay. Perhaps we'll start with Paul. Well, I'm here to support uh, Mr. Trump because he's going to make America great again. Hey, I think everybody else should vote for him. And I think they should all look at the fact that... Uh, That's Paula Jones, folks. Gloves are person. off. Yeah. Like, um, what other people have been saying he's been, like Hillary. So think about that. Okay. Kathy Shelton. Yes, I'm also here to support Trump. Um, I, uh, at 12 years old, Hillary put me through um, something that you would never put a 12-year-old through. Um, and she says she's for women and children. And she was asked last year on what happened. And she says she's supposed to defend whether they did it or not. And now she's laughing on tape, saying she knows they did it. You went through a lot. Yes, yes, sir, I did. Okay. Hi, I'm, I'm Winnie the Broderick. And I'm here to support Donald Trump. I tweeted recently, and Mr. Trump retweeted it, that actions speak louder than words. Mr. Trump may have said some bad words, but Bill Clinton raped me, and Hillary Clinton threatened me. I don't think there's any comparison. I'm Kathleen Lilly, and I support Donald Trump. The reason, the reason for that is the first day that he announced for president, he said, I love this country and I want America to be great again. And I cried when he said that because I think that this is the greatest country in the world. I think that we can do anything. I think we can accomplish anything. I think that we can bring peace to this world. And I think Donald Trump can lead us to that point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Mr. Trump, 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 all right, that just happened minutes ago. It's already got a half million views, which again, we have millions tuning in via our streams, YouTube. We have the backups, Infowars.com forward slash show. It took me 20 years to build up 3 million listeners a day on terrestrial radio. Now we get 5 million views a day just from my show on YouTube. I mean, it's getting insane. 5 billion on YouTube total. I have reporters that routinely have videos every week that get 5 to 10 to 20 million views a piece. McBreen gets one almost every week with over a million. Paul Watson with videos every week with 5 million. Routinely 16, 17, 18, 20 million. And we are dominating all over the place on ratings on terrestrial radio. Despite the fact that two conglomerates own 90% of the stations, we're basically on the ones they don't own. There's a few hundred that are privately owned, a lot of them big. We're on all of them. Okay? This is a total battle, a total war. Those neocon talk show hosts, I'll be on a 5,000 water, beat their 50,000 water. Places like Orlando, Chicago, you name it. And again, it's not, oh, I'm a big guy. The truth is popular. These people aren't. We are 46 minutes out. I'm going to be out of here in about 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to bring in Leanne McAdoo, David Knight, and then I'm going to come in and pretty much silently, but in case something happens during the debate, I'm going to be here. And then they're going to come in for a couple hours after Roger Stone's popping back in. Now, keep explaining this. I'm just an average guy that I'm still not perfect on air, far from it that 25 years ago started trying to get on radio and got on radio 21 years ago, locally. Started out on Access TV, and I now reach it's like 30 million people a week, conservatively. Okay, so I am spurring everybody to be activists. Start your local radio show. Start an Access show. Start a blog. Cover big issues. America, the future, Trump, globalism, the past, Hillary. Get aggressive, and whether he wins or loses, he's probably going to win. They're going to steal it. Doesn't matter. We have savaged the globalists. Their world government's out in the open. Nigel Farage just got UK out of the EU, the first phase. He's there advising Trump. Got that clip in a minute. That's why I'm so excited today and tomorrow. I'm going to have at least eight of the, uh, now it's 14 people. We're trying to get in touch with the others. Mail checks out on Friday. 
And I didn't do it for the money, but I put prizes out to make it for more fun. Thousand dollars, you get a Bill Clinton rep shirt out there because they're blocking this on TV. They're censoring people. They're doing everything they can to you know, not let these women that got raped and abused by Clinton get their word out. You just saw them. I'm going to lose money on this. We're going to sell 100,000 of these shirts. I mean, we have a, a, a Hillary for president, but not this one. And I said, just 5,000 if you wear it and get raped out. This guy definitely is the most hardcore of all of them. The, the, the guy that did it first in New York, a little scared to come on, all this other stuff's going on. But I got to tell you, I think this guy is the most bold. Uh, and I appreciate uh, Richard Jarrett uh, joining us. Uh, a little bit about Richard Jarrett. Um, He's been a congressional district elected delegate, Democratic National Convention, Chicago, Illinois, in 96, staff, Chicago Democratic Party, and, and a bunch of other uh, executive director, El Paso County Democratic, Colorado Springs. I'm not going to go over his whole bio, uh, but he's been uh, elected national DNC committee person. That's a big deal. National delegate. I mean, he's been what I'd call mid-level Democratic Party, maybe even upper middle level. Uh, national delegate, Democratic National Convention, it goes on and on. So this is a guy who, I said, we're all the real liberals that were against Bush and wars and all this evil. I mean, Hillary is worse, probably. And so, when I'm, and I was against Bush. I mean, I'm a libertarian. Trump's kind of like a liberal. If you're really getting down to it, he's just not crazy. And it, so some conservatives actually have a real issue on some points with him. I told you he didn't claim to be some angel. So I want to ask Richard Garrett. I've never talked to him yet. Appreciate him coming on. 5,000 in the mail, brother. Great job. Why'd you do this? Where do you see this world going? And then in a moment, we're going to play the clip for folks that have missed it. Well, Alex, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I, I've, been, I, I've spent 20 years being sick of the Clinton crime family. And I have had enough. So I ordered this um, Clinton rape shirt. I went down and registered the vote for the first time since 96 after I saw all the disgusting things that I saw at that national convention with Bill Clinton in a closed door meeting on Friday, August 30th. And after that, I went down the, to the Hillary headquarters, got some buttons on. I, I went down to the outlet, got a nice shirt to put over my rape shirt, got into the meeting. The, um, that brunette that took that other video, you know, that you said that was the wife. Actually, she wouldn't even talk to me because uh, I was some stinking liberal. <laughs> so oh, I mean, I was just she was, guessing she was your wife or girlfriend. Cause she, you know. No, no, no. I tried to talk to her because she was like, you know, she, she worked in the medical field. And she wouldn't even talk to me because I look, you know, she was like, I ain't talking to no liberal, you know. <laughs> so See, we should talk funny. to liberals and wake them up, yeah. Yeah, but so anyway, so all that video she shot was all coincidental. And that whole thing about when... Uh, when uh, when uh, Creepy Kane goes, well, you know, from Trump Tower, and then I go, Bill Clinton's a rapist. All that was going with what God gives you. And I was going with what God gives me and just going for it, going all the way. And that's what you got to do. You go register the vote, and you get out there and mix it up. Well, I'll tell you, it was powerful with the other guys. Have you seen the new clip where Bill Clinton's also on the trail? And he says, and I'll tell you the whole secret of it. They go, yeah, you're a rapist. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it, it's getting, I mean, how, how, so you were a Democrat earlier on. I could see how back in the 90s it would seem more reasonable. because Things weren't as clear then, and probably the Republicans are bad as well. But you saw a bunch of stuff that really woke you up. I want to interview you later in the week for a full 30 minutes or so to get into that background and what woke you up and what happened in those secret meetings, uh, you know, where the sausage is actually being made. But um, what do you make overall of this campaign and where this is going? Well, we got we to gotta get out there and tell these young people, right, that Bill Clinton is a rapist, a uh, sexual predator, and one of the nastiest individuals on this planet. Uh, the, the things I saw at a closed door meeting the day after his nomination speech in 1996 on Friday uh, was absolutely disgusting. Since you bring it up, let's talk about some of what you witnessed as a delegate, national well, delegate. Well, the, the first thing I witnessed was on. Um, was on Monday or Tuesday when Hillary Clinton had a, um, a special like uh, video shoot. She was outside the United Center. And, and all the convention delegates were inside. And she goes, hi, this is Hillary. I can't wait to see you guys. I'm so excited to be here in Chicago. I'll see you really soon. And then she snapped. She snapped into a bipolar rage. And she goes, take this effing mic and threw it right at the, the cameraman's face. And then the whole crowd went, shh, and they covered it up. It doesn't exist anywhere, you know? 
Then on Friday, the other, the, the worst thing I ever saw was Bill Clinton. And a matter of fact, all the people are right here. They're right here. The, the, you know, me, mainstream media, if you want to interview all these people, they're here in this book. The delegates and alternatives to the Democratic National Convention in 1996. Really easy to access. You know, we can start with the executive committee, all those women that he groped, and all these people on these rules committee and everything else. But anyway, I want to make a, I want to make a special appeal to someone that has given his life to us, civil rights. I sat, I was standing next to to the Reverend Jesse Jackson, and he. There was a lady in a wheelchair, and she was like stuck, and she couldn't get through the line because people wouldn't let her. And so the Reverend Jackson. Move these people out of the way, put her in front of the receiving line. And he said something I'll never forget. He said, Watch his hands. Watch his hands. And he was up there in his closed door meeting with the media, groping, touching, fondling all these women. And everybody's just like, Yay! Who was? Bill Clinton. Have you seen the videos of Joe Biden with little girls on TV, grabbing him, kissing him, telling him he wants to date him? Uh, Rob, do the video I, I, on this. I've never, never seen, seen it. it. It blew me away. I didn't know he does this on TV. I'll tell you what, man. This is, this is the bottom line. From, from the time Bill Moore, or the time Dick Morris went down for, uh, in that tabloid and he had to resign, and then to the time that Matt Drudge brought out Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton was a serial sexual predator and, and be clear you heard jesse jackson i've talked to folks that know him despite the fact the stuff he does and all the women these women he takes care of adult women he's had a few kids out of wedlock i've heard he's pretty nice to people behind the scenes though that you saying that's what you saw that you saw he said watch bill clinton's hands he told a woman in a wheelchair watch his hands and i was like what and then the, and then the, the person that invited me right the person invited me. We just sat there and watched in horror about how, how the hell is this guy like grabbing all these women? Like he was like grabbing deep, deep into like their deep down and just grabbing everything. Well, there's clean. video of him grabbing stewardesses, everything else. Reportedly, Clinton has sex with ten women a day. This was unbelievable. It was the day. It was August 30th. It was at a DNC committee person. So how does this compare to Trump? Because I admit I don't like the way it sounds. But you can hear it's edited, too. They're on a bus. He doesn't know it's being recorded. 11 years ago, he's joking about, these girls will let you grab their such and such because you're famous. He didn't say I'm grabbing, and he says they let you. I mean, okay, it's a little uncouth. We know we're not electing a saint here. He's never said he is. But we've never had allegations. I mean, all, I mean ugh, what do you make of that? Well, all, all I know is that um, I heard on Fox uh, News uh, earlier that um, it's not about his jokes. It's about his, um, you know, talking about his talking about him making a sexual, um, you, know, a, a sec, you know, talking about doing a sexual act, you know, being a sexual, um, doing a sexual assault, him talking about it. Bill Clinton has done it over and over and over and over and, and over. And settled it. And they all cover it. They cover everything up. They cover it all. And they've been covering up for these people since day one. The mainstream media covers up since day one. They do anything they want. I'm going to tell you something what happened to me. During after, afterwards, when they took me in the back of that room at that um, Carpenters Union, okay? The Carpenters, you know, were pissed, all right? They had a security detail, you know, and you know what? You, you know, they, wanted to, they, they said, you're trespassed. I got roughed up a little bit. It's, that's all cool, man. We're in Vegas. That's, that's how it works here, right? But they had that bald guy with the black suit on that's to the left me in the video, like, rubbing my arm up. He kept, he kept punching into me, ripping my, ripping my arm. And then he, it was right out of the matrix, Alex, right out of the matrix. And he goes, I'd watch out. We can do anything to you anytime we want. Yeah, until we decided to do something to him. That's what these guys are going to find out. Wow, I tell you, Richard Garrett, I want to get you up for a full 30 minutes an hour this week. This is amazing. I want to play a clip here. And then come back when you have a final comment because I'm going to get the other crew in here in the next 45 minutes before the debate kicks off. And they're going to be on afterwards with analysis. Uh, but the Clintons are so maniacal and so evil. I had them kick me off local radio, which is very popular. I was told quit talking about the Clintons. When I didn't, I got fired. Then I got physically beat up and attacked. And then when they're hitting me in the face, thugs, uh, they're saying, shut up about the Evan Clintons or you're dead. 
Imagine once they get power again, and you know, like you said, Secret Service agents have had two of them on, FBI agent. Hillary beats him with, with ashtrays, screams. Uh, I mean, I talked to security detail from the State Department, Blackwater, about what she would do in, in Iraq. It's the same damn crap. But they said she would get in like an hour-long car ride and go into a trance. They said it was like she wasn't human. Then I talked to other contractors, and, I, and they said, how do you know that? And I said, well, I was told that. This woman's not normal. Is what I'm saying. I mean, there's something weird. And where she'll be, if she has to be nice, she has to be mean. She'll be like a group of kids at the White House. Oh, sweetie. Oh, I love you. And when she closes the door, she'll go, I just start. And you're saying you saw that. It was in the entire convention, man. I mean, they showed the feed at the United Center on all the TV screens, right? And she goes, This is Hillary. I'm outside and I can't wait to see everybody. I'll be in really soon. And then she thought the feed was cut. And she goes, Take this effing mic and threw it right at the guy's face. And the whole crowd just shut up for like 10 minutes. Oh, I've talked to like Secret Service. Shot. They've been on air. And, and, and they'll, they'll, they'll say, she'll just for no reason go, don't you ever look at me in the eyes, you filth. You and your family are nothing. You're nothing like me. You know who I am. And they'll have a security <laughs> detail sweeping her deal for bombs in the green zone. Man, we've got to sweep it in there. You pieces of filth. You know what? Get that dog out of here. I don't want to. I will have you. I will have you written up and removed. And she'll scream for an hour. And then they go, and then they'll apologize. They'll go, oh, sir, it happens all the time. I mean, she yeah. is psycho, man. Yeah, she's a bipolar maniac bitch. Well, we're getting you back on, Richard. I'm going to, any way for folks to contact you that want to interview you or uh, you know, uh, other media? No, I'm good to go, man. You know, I'm going to keep striking all the way through this election uh, cycle here. Uh, wearing this shirt, hitting things here when they come to town, hitting fundraisers like that. Uh, right. giving, uh, well, Richard, great tonight. job. Five, five. I know you didn't do it for the money, but five grand's in there to make it exciting. Great job. You are the best at this. We're going to end with uh, you in a clip of this, and I'm going to play a short clip of uh, I've got several clips here that I want to get to. Uh, Bill Clinton is a rapist uh, movement becoming a meme. Get the rest of the crew in transit over here so they can take over. Uh, for 45 minutes or so, and then I'm going to come back in, and then they'll be here after the transmission. But here's Richard Garrett, uh, just over and over again. There's an ABC version. Also, lay the, well, uh, let's play the ABC version. Here, here he is. This is how it's done. They want to block this. They want to have a black ball of the media. They they control the narrative. No, we're storming the gates. An information war. She wants to send folks screaming racist to attack people. That's illegal. We have the WikiLeaks. What we're doing is peacefully follow the law, like Richard Garrett did it. This guy did it right. Five thousand dollars. But the, but the real Laurel is exposing these monsters. I'm the one risking my life, so let's get that straight. But he was, too, with these thugs. Let's go to it. Auditioning for a race four years from now, and the word out of Trump Tower, New York, is... Uh, Bill Clinton uh, the, is a rapist! The, 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 the Donald Bill Clinton is a rapist! Bill Clinton is a The Donald was not too happy about Bill Clinton. from Roger Stone is the Bill Clinton rape shirt. Looks like the, you know, communist style Obama hope shirt that says rape, wear it, get aggressive, 
start the conversations. Get on TV with it. In fact, I'm going to say this right now. Anyone that gets on national TV with the shirt clearly for more than five seconds gets $1,000. That means, you know, behind cameras, you name it. Anyone that gets it on air on national TV and gets the words out, Bill Clinton is a rapist, are things along that line with a bullhorn? I could go to this right now. $5,000 until a budget of $100,000 has been spent. Adoptable dogs. Well, Every year, the Best Friends Animal Society helps cats and dogs who are stuck in animal Bill shelters find homes. No one is a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> We've got but I think one of the kind of the things that we really need to be looking at in this debate is that Bill Clinton is a rapist. Infowars.com. Infowars.com. Bill Clinton's a rapist. Bill okay. Clinton is a rapist. All right. Bill Clinton. And I got this Hillary for Prison t-shirt, and I just want everyone to know about this like big presidential campaign that uh, Bill Clinton is a rapist. Infowars.com. Okay. Thank you very much, Terrence. How can we help families succeed in the most important job in any society, raising children and succeeding? How can we live together? How can we live together? He doesn't age. No, he doesn't. He looks great. We're all going to rickroll. Exactly. A lot to get to in this. We've had a $100,000 contest before. My budget's $100,000. That means if you know a bunch of people do this, I'll pay up to $100,000 and stop it. That's $1,000. If you just get the shirt on national TV, visually rape, okay? It is, it is five thousand dollars if you get the audio legally and lawfully. They got to be outdoors, other little events. You got to have a bullhorn. You got to have the shirt on or have somebody with it, or maybe a big sign with it on it, and two of you hold it up, and then somebody else bullhorns. Bill Clinton is a rapist, not a philanderer. Hillary covers up the rape. going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. InfoWars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. Are you going to sit down and play games and be a trendy or are you going to be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. Americanism. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight with Leanne McAdoo. We're only about 40 minutes or so away from the beginning of the debate. We're going to have some phone interviews coming up. But before we do that, uh, Leanne, your, your comments on what you saw Donald Trump doing had a, an amazing move to have a press conference with the victims of Bill Clinton, the rape victims of Bill Clinton, uh, had a press conference with them before the debate. I mean, this is right. a guy, he's not resting for five or six days before the debate. <laughs> He comes out swinging with that. I think right. it's going to be an interesting debate. Well, you know, Hillary Clinton has her minions in the press that can go and release things at opportune times. They do all the work for her while she's off napping for a few days in the background, <laughs> sitting there yeah. smugly, just waiting to, you know, prep for this debate. So Donald Trump goes and fires the first shot and has a, a just a few of Bill Clinton's accusers, the most notable ones, mm -hmm. out to do this press conference. And, you know, these are women who just are saying, look, they refuse to tell our story. We've been trying to tell this for decades now. And this was really genius because this is going to force the mainstream media to have to cover these women that continually tries to be swept under the rug, like the woman who uh, was one of Hillary Clinton's first cases there. Mm -hmm. um, Kathy Shelton, she was raped as a 12-year-old. And Hillary Clinton was representing her accuser, uh, her rapist. She, Clinton knew he was guilty and she laughed got him about it. Yeah, yeah exactly. laughed about and it laughed years about it. later. Laughed, yeah. about it. laughed about it years later that that ruined her trust in uh, lie detector tests from there on out. I mean, this is and so this is like setting the precedent for who she is decades on now. What yeah, she's willing to do anything, anything. Well, she, her very first case, as you point out, she gets a, a rapist of a child off on a technicality. And she has been throwing women under the bus for her husband, Bill Clinton's political career, and for her political career ever, ever since. since. That's yep. been her 
method of operation. And I think that's the most interesting thing about it. Here are we having all of these revelations that are coming out of the 11th hour, as Alex was pointing out earlier. There's a book that they've been working on for the last year or so that'd be time to come out right now before, just before the election. So it can't be vetted. It can't be disputed. We see this type of dirty trick done all the time. I remember when John McCain was running for president. And in South Carolina, they came out and they said uh, the day before the election, he's got an illegitimate black child to try to hurt him with the Republican voters there. Well, he had adopted a, a child uh, from India or something like that that was uh, dark skinned or whatever. But that's the way they, these, these crooks win elections. They throw this stuff out there at the last minute. They try to create an equivalency there between their crimes. They know what they've done. And so they right. create and invent stuff uh, for Donald Trump, real or imagined and throw this stuff out here at the last minute so people can't really uh, see what's going on. This is all being done for the low information voters. So right. People don't really know what's going on. And I want to talk about the real revelations that I think were important that they used this uh, this tape from one of the Bush family. And let's, let's understand, right. Billy Bush is the cousin of George W. He's the nephew of George H.W. Bush. This is the Bushes and Clintons up to their usual dirty political tricks. And so they put this out there, completely take off the... Uh, table the comments that Hillary Clinton had been making some amazing admissions. Well, what I think it's really key to point out here too is that the the people who are actually in possession of these tapes got scooped on this because they NBC and um, the uh, other Access Hollywood show they got scooped on it because they were holding on to these tapes mm -hmm. waiting for the opportune moment but they got leaked somehow and because at they needed time they, they needed, needed a cover to cover for these Podesta tape right? uh, Podesta emails and that's the key thing and then of course we have. Uh, the um, the usual suspects at the top of the GOP, people like McCain and all the rest of them who said, well, that's it. I'm not endorsing uh, Donald Trump. It's like, I don't ever remember you ever endorsing Donald <laughs> right. Trump. And every time there is something coming out that the mainstream media wants to build into a crescendo, they have all the usual suspects in the GOP come out and dump on Trump. Even somebody like Arnold Schwarzenegger saying that he's not going to vote for Donald Trump. First time he hasn't voted for a Republican. It's like, really? You mean the Arnold Schwarzenegger who had an, a, a child out of wedlock with his maid that That's broke made. up his marriage with a Kennedy? I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is like the Bushes and the Clintons, his the Schwarzeneggers and the Kennedys. to live with them with their Ill illegitimate son for yeah. years right in front of his wife? I mean, please, sit well, down. Well, it, it truly is hypocrisy. And, and I want to read something here that was on WND by uh, Alveda King. Uh, she's a, a, a descendant of uh, Martin Luther King, and she said, you know, Donald Trump has moved on from saying earlier in the campaign, uh, I don't need forgiveness for anything. Remember when he said that? And I said, oh, that's, that's really painful to hear that he hasn't come to that position. And hopefully, hopefully, he has grown as a person throughout this campaign. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she said is, you know, Mr. Trump apologizes, but she said, you know, America should apologize too. And when I look at the hypocrisy from Hollywood, Talking about the the comments that he made mm. and the fact that he tried to commit adultery, okay? This is Hollywood that sells this stuff to us on a regular basis. Right. This is the essence of what they do. Everything that comes out of Hollywood is either filthy talk, adultery, or gun violence. Right. They want to ban guns, okay? And they want to make a big deal out of Donald Trump's comments, which I think should be made a big deal out, but not in the context of these people. Hollywood and these news websites, you go to these news websites... And all over the news websites is softcore porn or hardcore porn, you know, Daily Mail or whatever. These are the people who are wringing their hands? What hypocrisy. Right. This is the filth that America has become. And the very people who sell this to us, the Hollywood people, the mainstream media, they're the ones that are just tisk yeah. tisk all this oh, stuff. And everything. Horrific. As if this, and this is nothing compared to what they do on a regular basis. This is how these people earn their money. Right. And yet they're trying to sell to us the idea that what Donald Trump said in this comment was, was so bad that he needs to be taken off of the ticket. I have never in my life ever heard anybody on either party say that somebody ought to be removed from a ticket. Mm. Never, ever. Even somebody who's been guilty of facilitating rape like Hillary Clinton. Nobody other than some of the victims of Hillary Clinton have called for her to be removed. Well, even Bill Clinton ran for president a second time. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, because they made that about consensual sex and not about the rape when they right. did that. That's why they focused on Monica Lewinsky so much. And she finishes, uh, Alveda King finishes by saying, okay, Mr. Trump is caught in the act of his past. So, quote unquote, yes, he's on the hot spot. God and the world are watching him, yet we all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. Not one of us is perfect. America needs to change. You know what? If, if America doesn't recover from this filthy 
state that we're in that's been sold to us by the very critics of, of uh, Donald Trump, if we don't recover from that, we will get Hillary Clinton as an act of judgment from God. Now let's take a look at some of these uh, things. I want to get your comments on some of these, Leanne. Uh, some of the emails that came out, okay? Uh, Hillary Clinton talking about how there's a bias against people who have led successful or complicated lives. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That's why she wants to go after Donald Trump's emails. Right. He's led a successful life. That means that his tax returns are complicated because he's got more businesses and she's got aliases. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, exactly. you know, this is why she wants to get him on the carpet. But she says this to the people, to the bankers that she's talking to. And these are right. there's speeches where she's getting a quarter of a million dollars, made about $22 million dollars. So she says to them a couple of things like that. Well, you know, we have to do this. And, and I think implied in this, the way I read this, it was kind of an implicit threat to them. Like, none of you want to get involved in this. Leave this to the people like Bill and I who have no conscience, who can lie without any remorse <laughs> any, or being caught. Uh, we can do the dirty work. You just need to pay us and we'll get done for wh what you need done. But I think it is clear that she understands precisely what is going on and going after these tax returns. Right, which is so incredible because Hillary Clinton herself has these questionable, complicated tax returns, um, but she's known just from being in the public eye for so many decades that she has to keep her squeaky clean. It's just her Clinton Foundation right. where, you know, you, it gets a little tricky there. Um, but she, she knows how to play the game. She's been doing this for decades, but it's so funny how they'll shine the light and just try to pull Trump out as if he's this terrible billionaire for taking advantage of these tax loopholes when she's taken the same exact loopholes. When she says that you've got to have a private a public policy and a public policy. In other right. words, I got two different things. I got one thing that when you and I, the bankers, are meeting behind closed doors, I'll tell you one thing, but I'm going to tell the public what they want to hear. Yeah, and I'm going to be for the TPP. I'm going to be for Keystone Pipeline. But I'll tell the public that I'm not for those things. And that's precisely what they're doing with the tax returns, as you mentioned, Leanne. Right. She has a set of squeaky clean tax returns that she puts out there for display. Whereas behind the scenes, privately, she's got this massive money laundering thing that's going on with the Clinton Foundation and everything else. This is incredible criminal enterprise that is completely off the records while she has this squeaky clean little uh, tax return that's very simple, shows uh, the, 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 the surf that she pays taxes just like they do, okay? And that's, uh, that's her public face. Right, and, and we also know with these WikiLeaks, uh, these leaked emails that she has admitted, you know, she's out of touch with the middle class lifestyle, you know, the struggle that your ordinary American has, has to go through. But yet she's putting herself out there on the campaign trail as this girl who just grow up meager means and her and her husband were dead broke. And mm -hmm. she's got hot sauce in her bag, swag like she's just like you and I. But meanwhile, behind closed doors to her, her cronies there, she's saying, hey, wink, wink, guys, I'm going to have to tell them this. But when I say this, you know, I really mean I'm going to allow you all to regulate yourselves because That's the you know of it. best. And, and when she's talking about people who have successful and complicated lives, okay, she goes back to her cattle futures uh, episode. Mm -hmm. uh, many of you may not remember Hillary Clinton's cattle futures episode. She's one of the most successful investors ever. And to, to go back to the sting yet again, because we talked about it last week with the little nose symbols and everything where she's uh, flicking her nose and stuff. <laughs> if you go back to what she was doing with the cattle futures, it's essentially, if you've seen the movie, The Sting, you know these guys set up a scam where they've got a, uh, a room and they've got a delay on the broadcast. So they already know who's won. And they run this thing to make it sound like it's going concurrently. And they take the bets from this other guy and make it uh, sound like it's, it's going to go a different way. They've already covered their bets knowing who's won because they do a delay. That's what Hillary Clinton did with the cattle futures. She and her buddies altered the trades, held the trades, made sure that Hillary's trades were put in at a certain time so she would win, and did that by causing other people to lose just out of the timing. So she ran a classic sting, just like the movie, The Sting, okay? But here's what she said. She goes to a bunch of people... Uh, a, ca a, a group that is uh, working with futures markets. And she says, now it's always a little bit risky for me to come speak to a group that's committed to the futures market because there's a few knowing laughs, they say. Many years ago, I actually traded in the futures market. I worked with a group of like-minded friends and associates. That's the way <laughs> she makes her money. Wow. Who traded in pork bellies and cotton and other such things. And I did pretty well. I invested about $1,000, traded up to about 100000 And she did it with just a couple of trades and then got out. That's the way they launder money in the Clintons <laughs> foundations, okay? And that was that was so early days. That was when she just took a thousand dollars and they, they paid her off at like a hundred thousand dollars. Now she launders money by giving speeches to banks, 
by having the Clinton Foundation and that sort of thing. So she's got much more sophisticated, much wealthier because they've they've uh, uh, they've taken this to the to the next uh, level. But right. that's precisely what she's doing. Right. That's the way she makes her money. And it's so incredible to see just the the massive amount of people that she has working for her in every single capacity trying to streamline her scandals, her speeches, uh, just the amount of people that went through and flagged her speeches because, you know, this started, The Intercept was actually one of the first that posed this question. Hey, release your speeches to, that you made to Goldman Sachs and others. And she kind of laughed it off at first, and then she could see the heat was, and she said, oh, yes, well, I'll, you know, maybe I'll get to that. We'll see where it is. I don't know. But while she's saying that to the public, she has all of her people looking, combing through all those speeches, flagging anything that's mm -hmm. going to look bad on her behalf. And so, I mean, think of how many people she has on the staff just wiping up behind her, sweeping up, trying to protect her in every single way. And then she goes out and laughs on camera and talks about the weather and stuff because that's how stupid that she thinks most people are. And frankly, you know, I'm going to think you're really stupid, too, if you allow this tabloid uh, sensationalism to swirl up around the actual issues to cloud people from the actual issues and from all of the scandals surrounding the Clintons and yeah. Hillary, week after week there's so many scandals <clears throat> that the move the news moves on so quickly let's talk about a couple of other things that she's got in here here's one you know we keep telling you that uh, it's not xenophobic or racist to say that we need to vet the people that are being brought into our country from areas that we have set on fire. And it's Hillary Clinton who has set these areas on fire. Mm -hmm. And she said, and this was back in uh, October of 2013, she said they can't possibly vet all those refugees so they don't know if, you know, jihadists are coming in along with legitimate refugees. That was Hillary Clinton. That was Hillary Clinton three years ago. Right. Today, if someone were to say that, they are despicable, racists, and xenophobes for saying that. One other thing that she says here, of course, and this is what we've been talking about. This is the essence of the election. When we say it's about Americanism versus globalism, here is the vision of globalism, which is Hillary Clinton's dream. She said, my dream is a hemispheric common market. That's the North American Union, folks. With open trade, open borders, and sometime in the future with energy that's as green and sustainable as we can get it. In other words, crony capitalism. Shutting down everything, shutting down coal, shutting down all domestic production of oil, shutting down all internal combustion engines, confining people to the cities, and turning all of our transportation, all of our energy production over to a few politically connected people. Okay, that's Agenda 21. That's the UN agenda for sustainable development she's talking about. And she's talking about the North American Union, mm -hmm. destroying our borders, opening trade, and turning it into a hemispheric open market that is going to be controlled by who? Is it going to be controlled by our elected representatives? No, we're not going to have a say in that market as to who gets to participate, who gets to play, which businesses and industries are going to be allowed to compete in that market. That's going to be something, as we've seen now, with the Trans-Pacific and the Trans-Atlantic Partnership Agreements. The economies are going to be managed by these Corporate, corp yeah, corporate uh, conglomerates, Okay, the same types of people that wrote these deals. So it's going to be a small committee, and it's going to be a living document. They can add China if they want to to the document. This isn't a, a, a bulwark against China coming after our country. They can add anyone they want to. They can change any terms. They can destroy any uh, industry, or they can lift somebody up. They can give a monopoly to anyone that they choose. That is what we're looking at. That is her dream. Right. And that's what she says, of course, in her private positions, not her public position, yeah. that she tells people she, now she's against the TPP. You know, she she wants to talk about the borders, uh, you know, after she lets in hundreds of thousands unvetted. Um, but it's interesting, too. Jake Tapper actually confronted Tim Kaine about these emails, and he immediately comes out and says, well, you know, there's thousands of them. I can't we can't be sure the Russians could have changed. We shouldn't trust WikiLeaks. Meanwhile, WikiLeaks used to be kind of the darling of the left. They were really all for WikiLeaks when they were exposing the type of information that they wanted. But now that they're going against the Democrats and Clinton, now all of a sudden he's a Russian agent. He's this terrible guy. And, and then you have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those Ruskies. Yeah. It's going to be nuclear combat toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ruskies if they get their way, and it will be. And, and, and he way. was asking, you know, well, did she say this to the Brazilian bank in 2013 that she was for open trade and open borders? And he's, that, he's like, oh, I can't, you know, he's like, well... You could just ask her. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It. <laughs> it is simply muddying the water. It is simply a smokescreen. 
They want to come out and say, it's the Russians, or they could make this stuff up. Who knows if they made this stuff up? Can't, just trying to muddy the water. They won't definitively come out and respond to any of these very specific allegations, these very specific quotes that are out there. They won't respond to any of it. They just say, well, you know, it could be made up. Well, it could be, but it isn't. If it were, you right. would come out and confront that. Here's another one. They want to talk about how, uh, how technology and how these leaks have come out. Uh, Clinton said when she got to the State Department, uh, most people were not permitted to have handheld devices. Well, there's a reason for that, Hillary, uh, and you just demonstrated for us uh, why there's a reason for that. Uh, we've got Owen on the line. We're going to go to Owen here in just one moment. Real quickly, though, I want to say, when I got there, she said they were mostly not permitted to have handheld devices. I mean, so you're thinking, how do we operate in this new environment dominated by technology and globalizing forces? Well, one thing you don't do is violate all security protocols. One thing you don't do is commit felonies. And they have been hoisted by their own petard. They thought they would set up these private servers and these multiple handheld devices, and they would be able to conduct their business on the sly. Mm -hmm. And instead now, what they're reaping is what they sowed, okay, because they had absolutely no security. Because not only are they criminals, they're also stupid. <laughs> and so because of their foolishness, they've exposed themselves as well as the rest of the nation to uh, this kind of exposure. And now that they're reaping this, they want to pretend, well, it's the Russians. And so we need to right. be able to go to war with them if they do any more cyber hacking well, again. Let's not forget, she knew exactly what she was doing because we know from that leaked footage that came, she was having dinner with Stan Lee where she was kind of joking off the cuff about, oh, emails. Have you seen how many times I've been audited? Can you even imagine if I... If I put that out there in public, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. I would never, emails would take me down. So even back then, she knew. So she had to set oh, up yeah. her own private server, keep everything separate. We got a clip of Kane talking about this uh, with Jake Tapper. Let's run that clip real quick. Um, let's turn to the latest revelations from WikiLeaks. We, we finally got a glimpse at excerpts from those famous paid speeches uh, by Hillary Clinton that Bernie Sanders wanted released during the Democratic primaries in, in one of them in a closed door 2013 speech to a Brazilian bank. Secretary Clinton said this, take a look, quote, my dream is a hemispheric common market with open borders sometime in the future. Is that her dream? Is that what she wants? Uh, open borders, an open market? Um, yeah, Jake, I'm glad you asked it that way because I, I don't think we can dignify documents dumped by WikiLeaks and just assume that they're all accurate and true. Anybody who hacks in to get documents is uh, completely capable of manipulating them. But you asked the question about what is her position on policy. Hillary's position on, on policy on markets and trade is very plain, which is we'll do trade deals, but only if they meet three criteria. Do they increase American jobs? Do they increase American wages? Um, and are they good for national security? And if they are, and if we can enforce them, then trade deals are okay. But if they're not, we can't embrace them. And as you know, when Hillary was a U.S. Senator, she voted for, for some trade deals when they met her standards, but she voted against others when they didn't. Uh, we're going to fight uh, so that the only trade deals we'll contemplate are ones that have the high standards that she set out. Right, but Senator, are you, I mean, first of all, are you disputing the accuracy of this? Did Hillary Clinton not say I, to these Brazilian I, I bankers have, I that have she had no, this dream? Um, Jake, I have no way of knowing the accuracy of documents dumped uh, by this hacking organization. But I, I think it is really important. This hacking has been connected. Um, much of the hacking so you make it about the hacking. You don't want to talk about TPP uh, and these other things. She said but did she say it? He won't, he won't admit. That this kind of hacking has been traced directly to the Russian Russia, government Russia. and there is a direct <laughs> intent to uh, influence the outcome of an American mm. election. Oh, if by who? The, in fact the true, DNC? You cannot accept as gospel truth the everything media, that they might the... put in the document. <laughs> but you didn't ask about the document. No, I, I you understand. asked me what Hillary Clinton's position was. Exactly. Right. That's so fair. answer the question. Is this document <laughs> then? Is it is it accurate? Did she the tell Brazilian bankers that <laughs> I, I have no I have no way of knowing that. I have no way of knowing. I know well, you nothing. could ask her. Well, you, you I could know ask nothing. <laughs> but but the documents are in the thousands. I haven't asked her. But you asked me about her position on trade. The I position have on asked trade her. is uh, is very clear. Well, maybe you should ask yeah, she her. She thinks TPP is a ghost you out here like a little puppet. Her, her dream is a hemisphere common market with open borders. Is is that something that the in the in the Clinton Kane administration we would see open borders and open trade? We believe in comprehensive immigration reform that would. Uh, with the pillars that we've described, where we would have more border security. As you, Jake, as you know, 
I voted for significant investments in border security in June of 2013 Rob, and oh, continue to believe that's part oh, of a comprehensive immigration reform control. plan along with the, the value of keeping VP families together either. and providing a path to citizenship for those who <laughs> uh, work hard, play by the rules. All right, uh. And of course, back in 2013, Hillary Clinton said, uh, we don't have any way to know well, the jihadists are coming in along with legitimate refugees. Right, and she also called the TPP the gold standard in trade deals. Yeah, so. and nothing has changed. I mean, he is, <laughs> he, uh, Kane himself is, is for the TPP. Right. I want to go to our reporter, uh, Owen uh, Schroyer. He is in St. Louis at the site of the debate. Owen, what's happening in, in St. Louis? Well, we are on the campus of Washington University, and if you don't believe in the liberalization of higher education, in this country, this is an illustration. It is truly unbelievable. All of these higher education students, I would say, um, at least from what we've seen out here on the ground, it is probably 80% Hillary Clinton supporters. Unbelievable. I'm surprised there's 20% that aren't because uh, that, that's the whole point of colleges anymore is to sell uh, the political correctness, the uh, the victimology, everything that yeah. uh, they're that's why they want to have everybody go to college for You're another four years. It's, it's a, yeah, exactly. It's a propaganda machine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'm surprised well, you know, there's 20 percent there that uh, that aren't. <laughs> some of us, some of us are able to uh, some of us are able to beat the brainwashing. But my guess is uh, all the Trump supporters were probably studying in the library trying to get good grades for their future. But you know, it's amazing. <laughs> um, we've got the CNN set here uh, right. To my right, as uh, or cameraman is putting it on right here, you know, I, I, it's just amazing. I know you guys have been on air, so you probably haven't heard the uh, debates or the conversations going on on the CNN roundtable. My God, I mean, we are talking about the softest, weakest-minded people. I can I, I can't even imagine the things that that they're saying. Jake Tapper, Jake Tapper is hosting your debate night. <laughs> this guy is he is terrible. I mean, honestly, no energy, no way to lead an invigorating conversation. The whole time they're sitting here talking about the Trump uh, tapes being released, Van Jones even says that now Trump's voice and people who speak like Trump are now the, the representation of rapists in this country. Doesn't even mention Bill Clinton. Doesn't yeah, even mention yeah. him. Wow. These people who have given Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton a pass for 25 or more years on rape allegations and uh, multiple rape allegations now are just absolutely incensed about the comments that Donald Trump uh, made. And I was saying earlier, Owen, that what we see is the same people in Hollywood and the media complaining about this language. That is how they make their money. Really that is how they make their money, selling that to the public. Yeah, I mean, it's just if you tune into any late night television show, any humor, you know, any movie, you're going to hear that stuff. And you have no problem paying for that entertainment. You know, Donald Trump says something that, you know what, okay, it's inappropriate. We say inappropriate things. These people sitting on this set, you're going to tell me that they've never made lewd comments in a private conversation. And if they haven't, I feel bad for them. I mean, honestly, I guess that's the brainwashing uh, conversations that liberals have with one another. There's no <laughs> excitement or energy, yeah. everything. Don't offend anybody. Don't <laughs> offend anybody. But um, it's amazing. We got a ton of videos. There are a few of them that are on the Alex Jones channel already on YouTube. If you liked my work... What I've done with other Trump protesters, you're going to love what you see on the Alex Jones YouTube channel tonight. That's great. That's great. So um, uh, what else have you seen there? You, you've done some uh, interviews with some of the uh, Clinton protesters there, and you've seen um, uh, CNN talking about uh, how they're going to spend this. Are they talking at all, uh, Owen, about the Podesta emails that were leaked? Nothing. That's, it's that's all very, that very off. limited. Uh, it got... You know, uh, you've got uh, Jeffrey Lord and uh, Kaylee McEnany are on the stage. So obviously they injected and shed some light onto that situation. But anytime it got brought up, you know, Van Jones or, or Jake Tapper would immediately divert and change the topic. back. Yeah, we had and we've right. been uh, reading some of the places here where Hillary Clinton bragged about how she and some of her like minded individ uh, individuals had helped her to uh, make a fortune investing in cattle futures, uh, talking about how. Oh, but uh, it's have, not on the mainstream news, so it doesn't exist. That's right, yeah. Talking about how she's going to do uh, gun control by executive order. That's one of the key things that she uh, said in, in these things. But, of course, that's not anything at all that uh, anyone is going to talk about. All they're going to talk about is uh, Donald Trump saying the types of things that you see go out uh, on a daily basis from the uh, television programs, from the uh, movies that, that we see. To me, right. it's like these people uh, like Matt Damien, who, who makes his money 
uh, doing action films, uh, complaining about guns and saying right. that we need to eliminate guns. It's They're that all type total of hypocrisy. Hypocrites. Well, and that's what we've also seen with these with these leaks is the uh, cozy press relationship that the Clinton campaign has, and they have you know all of these reporters, mainstream reporters that we all know, Wolf Blitzer, Rachel Maddow, Chris Hayes, et cetera, et cetera. They are the friendly press, and they're going to these exclusive, um, off-the-record dinners and to kind of uh, be taught how to put Hillary Clinton's message across and, you know, what's, what type of ways that they can protect her and feed, her, feed Clinton's stories um, just in case anything bad comes up about the Clinton Foundation, about her emails. What are some other stories that you guys could cover instead? And we're just watching with these leaked emails. I mean, that's what we've been witnessing the mainstream media doing is just protecting her left and right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and the amazing thing is, even talking to the Clinton supporters that are out here, many of them admit they don't like Hillary. They admit she's corrupt, and they basically just hate Donald Trump so much that they're going to vote for Hillary, even though they don't like her. So I say, well, why not? You know, there's other candidates. You can vote for another candidate. And they're like, no, we're just going to go ahead and vote for Hillary. Oh, but she's corrupt. She's a liar. Yeah, we're going to vote for her anyway. Okay. Good luck well, with that. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to play some of the uh, reports, some of the interviews that you've had with people uh, there at the University of St. Louis. Brace yourselves. And uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we we're going to be right that? back with that. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and the debate is coming up in about another ten minutes. We're going to have uh, some of Owen's encounters with the politically brainwashed. We'll be right back. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. Why are we attacking Trump? Sexual assault that he admitted to. He lost a billion dollars in one year. He's a moron. Steve Jobs, come on. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs also lost a billion dollars and is world renowned as one of the most smartest men in the world. Steve Jobs. Business men lose money, okay? Steve Jobs. Daddy didn't build it up, okay? I think it's funny. I think it's funny how Trump protesters want to demonize Donald Trump for being a womanizer when Bill Clinton has settled multiple rape cases. That's a fact. That's a fact. So wait, so you want a rapist in the White House? You only want a rapist in the White House. Raise your hand. Hey, raise your hand if you want a rapist in the White House. You guys, raise your hand if you want a rapist in the White House. Who has Donald Trump raped? He's like, saying that, oh, it's okay yeah, that I can touch it. a woman because I'm... Who a has a Donald woman. Trump raped? He's He's woman. Woman. Name one woman. Name woman. one woman. Name one woman. Her husband is raped. Dozens of women. No. Raise your hand if you want to rape in the White House. Raise your hand if you want to rape in the White House. If you want to, Donald Trump is a moron. Donald Trump's a moron. This guy has made billions of dollars. One of the most successful businessmen in the world. His daddy gave him all his money. His daddy gave him everything. Daddy gave him everything. You wouldn't take a million dollar loan from your dad to build a business? You bet I take a million. Let me ask you a question. Fourteen million. Fourteen from my daddy. If you got one million dollars and turned it, fourteen. Okay, but if you got if you got a hundred million dollars and turned it into six billion, would that be a success? No, because I could do. No, that's not a success. Turning millions into billions is not a success. This is right out of Austin Powers. Why make billions when we can make millions? This is what we're dealing with out here. He lost all his money. His daddy bailed him out again. I love this. His daddy bailed him out. Trump is going to bail out this country from the corrupt politicians that we've been dealing with for decades, folks. For decades. These people complain about the government. They want to put another government shield right back in the White House. It's really unbelievable, folks. Owen Troyer from InfoWars.com. We're going to be out here all night. Please don't let him withdraw, okay? What? Keep him in the race. Please, don't withdraw. He's kicking ass. I think we all Hold on. That, right? Donald we Trump, Trump is kicking ass. ass. You know that? You know Donald Trump is kicking ass? Oh, yeah. Have you seen the Hillary Clinton rally? Uh, yeah. No, I haven't. Exactly, because nobody goes. Oh, my God, Donald Trump oh. has people. Hey. 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 hey, you guys have been a great audience. Make America great again. Yeah. Right. Trump. White power, right? White power. As I said, we are now. Only five minutes exactly up from this historic debate. If Trump doesn't attack the hypocrisy and the lies, he's in deep trouble.
He could still come back the next 29 days. We're almost 28 days starting at midnight in just a few hours. We're 28 days basically out, ladies and gentlemen. 28 days. Less than a month. We have Billy Bush, the nephew of George Herbert Walker Bush. We have this recording of Trump with some jocular, heavily edited audio making jokes about these women love you so much you can grab on them 11 years ago. And you've got the judge that Obama appointed in the district Hillary Clinton was a senator in approving today three Jane Doe's, one of them they say a victim, two of them witnesses, one that didn't see it, of Jerry Epstein, Epstein and Trump double teaming a little girl 22 years ago when the Clintons and Obama covered up for Epstein and he got a slap on the wrist for girls being shipped to Slave Island reportedly. Clinton on the plane 20 plus times. It was 16 times. I'm just saying 20 times. Think about the setup and a book they've been writing for a year claiming this. But the FBI has already given immunity to all the people. Just like we saw with Hillary servers. What do you expect? You want a dirty trick? People that overthrow governments? Oh, look, Bill Clinton's on screen. Let's punch that up for folks. Oh, how you doing? Let's show Bill Clinton up front being nice, shaking everybody's hand. He's so good. And I heard in the audience tonight there's going to be a young lady, Kathy Shelton, who was 12 years old and got raped and put in a coma. And then Hillary admittedly knew he was, knew he was guilty but covered up for him. And so the little girl wanted it. So that's all coming up. This is a referendum on the mainstream media and its lies, on the corporate media, and on everything they do. This is a referendum on whether we can break their conditioning. Whether we can see through their lies, turning his mic off a week and a half ago, which was confirmed, asking him 40-something questions, Hillary gets six, interrupting. Same thing with his VP, but still, pinch one. Now, the moderator's up here babbling mindlessly. We're going live in three minutes here. We've got multiple feeds, but Darren McBreen, you're going to be covering this after the show, in an hour and a half of the show, the P.T. Barnum disinfo with the whole system against Trump, Trump against the globalists, Trump against the world. America against the world, all these foreign governments telling us what to do and who we can have. McBrain, real fast. Well, the, the moderators are getting on the stage right now, and I, I just, Trump, he's, he found out the hard way that the moderators are not his friend. And CIA Anderson Cooper. Lester Holt was not his friend, and certainly CIA Anderson Cooper is not going to give him any love tonight. So I also think, Alex, we, we need to look out for operatives in the audience. This is a town hall style meeting. And uh, we know from, like, just a couple days ago, Hillary had a plant in the audience. You can expect the same thing tonight. Absolutely. All right. Great job, McBrain. We'll be talking to you more with Leanne McEnroe and David Knight in the live coverage. I'm going to be a good boy tonight. I usually get a lot of commentary and analysis, but we're going to sit back and get very, very limited. We have streams at Infowars.com of the, of the dry feed from right side and others. Without our commentary, we'll have the limited commentary here. And then after full analysis in an hour and a half, let's go ahead and go to this feed. Oh, look, there's Bill Clinton and Chelsea. Chelsea has somewhat of a soul. She said, Dad, why are you killing all the Haitians? Why don't you give them money? Why do you give them watered-down drugs? Why do you steal 97%? But still, she won't stand up against it. So they're going live in about a minute and a half. I just want to thank the viewers and listeners of Infowars.com to support the broadcast. And we have the Bill Clinton rape shirt that's spreading across the country. Folks are putting up rape signs outside. We've had 14 times he's been confronted or they've been confronted with rape on national TV. They want to blame Trump for this. They've settled rape cases. So... Gloves are off. You want to hire Black Lives Matter with George Soros to go beat people up? We're not calling for violence or anything illegal. We're just showing up with citizens, bringing up the fact you settled sexual assault cases. All right, Anderson Cooper and Mrs. Rat Raticus, or whatever her name is. Uh, it's going to be three against one. Trump, the lion, with three hyenas. I guess a jackal and two hyenas. Hillary's the jackal, the joker. Going at them. All right, so here we go. 45 seconds. InfoWars. Dot com forward slash show. You'll be part of the info war, sending friends and families and neighbors the link to get our live analysis and post debate analysis at infowars.com forward slash show or download the free app at infowars.com forward slash app has video feeds everything to break through the mainstream media. We have millions of viewers when we do this. We're bigger than they are now. They can't stand it. It's why she wants to shut down the alt media. Let's go to Central Intelligence Agency officer working for foreign banks, Anderson Cooper, uh, and uh, his other uh, person. So this is Hillary Cooper and Ratty. Uh, three of them. So they're now saying a, a few more minutes. They, the, they're they waiting a few minutes here. I guess they're going to go to it late like they did a week and a half ago. I wonder if Lester Holt's earpiece is going to go out. He's not there this week. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are counting down right now to the debate. Infowars.com forward slash show. Uh, let's just uh, go ahead and write down, fade up the audio and get some of the background noise here for radio listeners. A lot of affiliates are tuning into this. 
Uh, and as you can hear, uh, they're just sitting around waiting. It's now 8 o'clock Central and 25 seconds. So, yeah, C-SPAN is saying three minutes, but we've got atomic clocks. As you can see, C-SPAN says it is. It is 6 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Mountain, 9 o'clock Eastern. We've got our own feed. Let's maybe put our feed up there from right side, which is you can notice it's the same feed. We also subscribe to the same feed, but we've been partnering with right side because they're great folks. They're also donation supported. We're supported by some sponsors, but we are also supported just by the high quality nutraceutical supplements and products at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsStore.com. This is the house the people built, now reaching upwards of 30 million people a week conservatively. Hillary has a name. This is the number one enemy she wants to shut down. She says the alt-right, meaning true liberals, Thomas Jefferson style, have no right to exist. Talk about Hitlerian. The press has no right to exist. They admit Obama's been three times worse in the press than anybody in history. But that's okay because it's liberal. So there's Anderson Cooper. And, and how do you pronounce her name? Radicus? Ratty? Ratty? Uh, the old uh, Raditz, the old piranha. We're all here about how Clinton and Hillary are great to women and how horrible Trump is. And they got a fake rape lawsuit of little kids tomorrow with, you know, all this stuff. It's just all so cute. It's all so wonderful. Jane Doe's made up stuff. Bill Clinton, we know he's on the Rape Express. We know he's involved. We know Trump was going to bring this up. This is a nuclear option. They said, hey, bud, we'll just have an honest people go file a lawsuit in a district judge in New York. We control and see how you like that. And so everybody wants to bitch about Trump, he's the man in the arena. He's the man in the arena. He's our champion fighting globalism, just like UKIP. And Nigel Farage has been coaching him for a week. I'm going to get Nigel Farage on next week, by the way. He said he want to come back on. And, and, and this is it. You want to get out of the New World Order? You don't want the establishment? Everybody keeps claiming they don't want to be part of the New World Order and the Federal Reserve and them selling our jobs to China? But it's time to be honest with yourselves and know then you have to break from the mind control. And I know the average viewer here has. But you've got to send this link out to everybody. I have a way of breaking people's mind control. So do you. Our listeners are out there charging in everywhere, injecting the truth at these live events and shaking the globalist up and letting these arrogant monsters know they're not invincible, they're not God when they sell us out. You're tuning in. This is Infowars.com on radio and TV stations across the country. The streams, you can send out to everybody. If you're driving down the road and say, Albuquerque, New Mexico, listen right now. That's great. Tell folks about the station uh, that you're listening to. But also tell people about Infowars.com forward slash show for the free audio and video feeds. There's that evil Donald Jr. that keeps sending out links to Infowars.com. The media has told him, Donald, you don't do that or we'll say bad things about you. But if your dad's nice to us, we'll make up pedophile allegations. Even worse, you're in the arena with scum. They're going to give you no quarter. Charge in 199% or you're going to lose everything. It's all the line. Trump must attack with the truth and the incredible hypocrisy of Hillary. She's like, you made fun of a fat lady because uh, she wouldn't do her job. Uh, okay, into the world. Oh, my God. You funded jihadis to run around raping and killing women. You su support and defend pedophiles you know are guilty that brutalize and put 14-year-old girls in, or 12-year-old girls in comas. You're a monster. You're a pig. You're a criminal. You lied. You stood down in Benghazi and people died. How dare you in the media rig this thing in front of the American people? How dare you put Homeland Security over the election with the U.N.? and the, the uh, EU. How dare you try to sell all these frauds and create all these derivatives and the Glass-Steagall Act to screw everybody over? How dare you try this? How do you know Trump's good? The whole establishment's against him. They're trying to destroy him, and nobody would do this job and be one of their insiders as a shill because they're going after him. They're trying to ruin his businesses. They're trying to bankrupt him.